All right, uh, let's skip uh, most of the time. Uh, sorry about that. That was kind of messy. Uh, it's my whole day, uh, <laughs> basically. Uh, hey there, Ed. Uh, great that uh, the Pirate Gamer Boy, you're already here. I hope uh, the others will also find a way over here. Uh, the thing crashed on me. I just... <laughs> uh, Monday I placed a new modem and I think that was kind of messing up there. Uh, a bit of a hiccup. I don't know why, but oh well. Uh, hopefully it works this time around. <laughs> um, let's uh, let's hope. Yeah, this uh, this is basically my whole day. Uh, quite a mess, quite a chaos, uh, chaotic uh, bit of a day. But oh well. Uh, Ed, great that you could make it. Uh, of course, if you got a race to com commentate uh, in Seoul, cool, awesome. Sounds uh, sounds sounds uh, interesting. Uh, as usual, I'll probably check it out later, um, once, uh, you know, tomorrow. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry, this is not really my day, but uh, <laughs> maybe this will help. Uh, I um, I got out a nice little uh, uh, cherry beer, a, uh, what's it called actually, a, a quack. I never had a quack, but uh, normally I have a uh, Creek Lambic as a cherry beer. Um, but uh, this is uh, this is something different, and I normally really enjoy these kind of fruity beers. So uh... yeah, this is uh, this is no exception. Love it, love it. Yeah, sometimes when you play some CDI, you do need uh, need a little pick me up, a little beer to get you through <laughs> all of the cringe worthy um, uh, things that we come across. Uh, but yeah, uh, how have you guys been today? Uh, hopefully, uh, been a bit better than me. <laughs> it started out really uh, off already with someone uh, very early on cleaning the galleries of the apartments here, and um, he was uh, pretty adamant in making it known that he was not Pavarotti. Let's uh, <laughs> put it mildly. He was singing, and uh, well, you know singing with a uh, big quotation marks well awesome awesome I love Heart of Darkness cool game uh, uh, only played it on the uh, uh, the PS1 but uh, really enjoyed that one uh, quite cruel for kind of something that seems like a uh, like a kids game but quite a couple of cruel death scenes in there Hey there! Thank you uh, for finding it again, Ben. Sorry for that uh, for that uh, uh, miss up. Anyway, I got a couple of uh, CDI games. Let's hope I won't forget too much else. Uh, also, my uh, I hope it's not going to interfere us. But I also forgot to put on the washing machine, so maybe that's going to uh, interfering us. Uh, I don't know. We'll see about that. I forgot to turn it on, uh, but you know that's. After this morning, I even forgot uh, to even load it in the morning. So, you know, everything's going great today. Awesome. Anyway, I got a couple of uh, different CDI titles. Uh, it, it's been a long while for me to actually expand my collection. Like any any bit of it, actually. Um, because I haven't really looked at my retro collection for quite a few years. Um, but I decided to, you know, it might be fun to actually uh, see if there's anything out there. Um, and normally, <laughs> yeah, rise of the uh, washing machines. Oh dear, <laughs> uh, this one is not uh, linked to Skynet yet, so that's uh, that's a good sign. Um, but as I was saying, uh, normally if I uh, hunt for games, I usually am very patient when buying new stuff. I always uh, try to look out in different categories and I just lowball everything. And usually, you know, people will just uh, not even respond to you or are uh, uh, rightfully rude to you. Um, but sometimes you get lucky. So now I actually got a few big games uh, in one lot that I did not own yet or I say games, but they are uh, a bit of a mix of reference materials, uh, some kid stuff, uh, which can also be quite uh, interesting to look at uh, on CDI because CDI is really actually quite good at it. Um, and uh, yeah, they, they are uh, this tag here. 
So we got a good bunch here. Um, but I can't... I can't show them off all. Uh, because the first one here... Well, first of all, the first two are Dutch. So I don't know if you even want to even look at those. Um, but the first one I can't actually show off because it is... Um, living... Loving... Loving for a lifetime. <laughs> Which is a Dutch. How should we how should we call this a Dutch educational title? It's uh, here's Griso. He's always interested, of course. Um, but yeah, this is a um, like an educational title for couples on how to have sex, basically. <laughs> and, It's, uh, yeah, Griso is all about the love. Usually Griso's love just goes through the the stomach. Yeah, there's also the joy of sex. And this is kind of like the, the Dutch ver, uh, version. This is actually with uh, 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 a rather famous um, speaker for sex. Uh, which is uh, Goede Liekens. Uh, who is Belgium. I think she was actually mid Belgium at one time, but I remember her mainly from uh, in the, When I was a kid then she was on TV nowadays and she was really good at um, You know talking about sex stuff. She really broke that taboo as it were and she she had this this knack of being uh, quite you know, bring it talking about it very normally in a normal sense. Like it, it, it really helped open up uh, people in in just um, making it more, you know, of a topic that you could actually talk about. Which uh, you know, it's not always the case, unfortunately, especially uh, when you are teens. You are, but yeah, I, I especially, of course, uh, she was uh, she was nice looking. She had a cute Belgium accent, and she uh, she had a dirty talk on TV. So what was not to like? Uh, and this is uh, from her and <laughs> I did uh, I wanted to check out if I could actually show anything of it but uh, I, no <laughs> this stuff is not censored at all but uh, yeah if you want in Dutch uh, a course on um, you know having sex and uh, checking out uh, to make sure if you can get a stiff, a stiff uh, this is the title for you <laughs> and uh, nothing is uh, uh, censored at all uh, and it's 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 kind of curious that they even figured a, a title like that was needed, but uh, just hilarious because it is for couples. It is marketed for couples, not for teens to learn about sex. No, it's it, it's brought as like this self help thing. If you have trouble in your sex life, then go sit together and <laughs> look at these lessons, and perhaps you can lift up your sex life. It's quite hilarious. Um, Anyway, uh, I've got another Dutch one here. Yeah, here come the sex bots in no time. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we've got <laughs> also uh, Body Contour, uh, which is actually a fitness uh, guide, uh, a fitness program on CDI. Um, and it's also in Dutch, so I'm not. I, I I might actually show a bit of this because it's quite hilarious how they actually film this. Um, but you know, it's it's kind of interesting to see what were the fitness instruction things like in the back in the eighties, in the nineties. I think this came out in ninety two. Um, I also uh, have been a fitness instructor, so you know it's kind of interesting in that regard to to see it. Uh, and this promises to, you know, you can um, you can register your name and your your measurements and such, and it will actually make a program. It says I never tried it out, and it's basically mostly aerobics, which you know is a thing. Um, so it's no powerlifting or anything. Uh, but, you know, for aerobics training, it, it could be good, I guess. Uh, and it also has some recipes. I do have a child is born, uh, <laughs> indeed. Uh, of course, I, uh, I have the crazy stuff, uh, uh, mostly. Although I didn't have that one. Do I have the joy of sex, actually? 
I don't think I do actually. I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I don't have all the reference. I do have a strip poker, of course. <laughs> See, the FMV scene was uh, was a weird one. Anyway, um, this is in Dutch, so we won't be able to really delve into it much. Uh, but I, I do want to show you what they actually figured was a good framing of, of uh, these exercise scenes. Because it's quite, uh, quite funny. Uh, or, well, quite funny, quite interesting. So let's. Yeah, I don't know if if there was any market for that uh, uh, sex thing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't pass it uh, off that they actually mostly still marketed in uh, in schools and such. If teenagers would uh, buy it, you know. Probably should put it a bit quieter. Let me know if the audio levels are good. Uh, yeah, Ben, I have played the Incredible Machine and I was absolutely terrible at it. <laughs> I found it very interesting, the Incredible Machine, but uh, uh, yeah, it's. It, it's very, um, I don't know, physics and me, we don't really get along, I guess. Uh, it, it, I find it very hard um, to, to really um, make any everything work in tandem as intended. I had some friends who were really into it and built some crazy contraptions, uh, which, you know, it's cool if it works, if they can show it off. Um, but yeah, I'm more interested in the puzzle mode, but I couldn't really get far into it. Uh, <laughs> anyway, look at this menu screen already. It's just... Wow. It's not, uh, it's not very appealing, is it? And... And uh, yeah, you're absolutely right, Pirate Boy. Uh, SPC Vision uh, made uh, uh, some absolute great games. Uh, anyway, there's a couple of sections. There is uh, here for uh, to register yourself and uh, to actually uh, start a personalized program. Here is some just aerobics um, things, you know, where you can just have a timed session where you just get a bunch of exercises and they don't explain anything. That's also like the crazy thing. Maybe if you start a program, you actually get um, like explanations of the exercises. But that is what I found when I checked it out. If we could actually look at this, um, that it was really lacking. And here is some explanation, but they don't actually explain any of the um, uh, the exercises, which I, I don't know, it's just really strange for me. And look at this. Yep, Twitch comments also uh, come through. Just uh, crystal clear. Uh, but yeah, they, they have some basic explanations on how to monitor uh, heart rate. Um, and a basic uh, on, on cardio training. And about running and about cycling. And they have some, I think they have some, yeah, they have some schedules here. But they never actually explain you, uh, ex tell you how to actually do the different aerobic exercises. As, at least not as far as I have seen. Which I just find really, really strange for a fitness program. Uh, also kind of weird that uh, I didn't actually show it. But I can show it in the uh, 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 recipe tab here. All of this stuff is all text based. There is no audio or no nothing. There's no videos. Uh, it's, it's just very bare bones. You've got different um, uh, countries for recipes and each has uh, 10. Uh, there is the Dutch one, German one, uh, French, Italian, uh, Spanish, uh, Danish and Swedish. Kind of an odd selection. There's no English. There's no like there's no room in, in fitness for English breakfast, guys. Come on. <laughs> Uh, I'm kidding. Engl English breakfast actually isn't that bad for uh, uh, for for some power training, <laughs> uh, but for some reason it's not included here. 
uh, and you can uh, select the uh, select the amount of calories and the type of dishes but yeah each each country has 10 dishes and and uh, yeah I, I i i am very poor with breakfast in general so english uh, breakfast uh, is is way too mighty for me and yeah it's basically here you know text also a very small text box and you couldn't print this stuff out so you know it's it's kind of kind of odd thing here it would have made more sense if they just had a book with it but whatever uh, there are some pictures i think uh, yeah, there we go. Sometime one of the mules has uh, has a picture. So, mmm, that's a lovely omelette. <laughs> At least I hope it's an omelette. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the recipes. Also, no videos again, no techniques. It's just, here's a bunch of stuff and uh, make it. And very uninspired, I find. I I am just so bad with breakfast. I basically uh, the first time, the fire the first time I tend to eat is about four or five uh, p.m. Uh, yeah, don't uh, don't shout. <laughs> A donut for breakfast, huh? That uh, could work. Could work. Could uh, get you get you going. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's look at the highlight and let them actually. Um, now they are going to talk and explain the exercise very basically. As I said, they really don't do a good job. Uh, but I just, <laughs> I thought just where they actually filmed this stuff was hilarious. Um, so I will probably lower the audio a bit so we can keep talking. So this is a ten-minute uh, exercise club, and. <laughs> Look at this. They, they actually rented a boat, and they put, <laughs> and they put my man here on top of it to do exercises. It's <laughs> this is just so. This is so weird. Yeah, no, my, my times of exercising have been a been bit behind me, but uh, I never was a fan of uh, this aerobic exercises. I'm not sure if this is Amsterdam, actually. It doesn't look like Amsterdam. This, um, I don't know, this, this looks more like maybe Utrecht or Leiden. I'm not entirely sure. Probably somewhere. But yes. <laughs> also, this white sheet. Why? 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 It's just. I mean, if you go this this far to just go out there, why not just remove the sheet? Yeah, he is standing on a boat, and it, but still, it must be going back and forth. Uh, so. It is still kind of impressive that he is doing it. Yeah, this is in Dutch. Uh, this is a Dutch title. Um, and again, I find it really weird, but they really do a very poor job in actually uh, explaining the exercise. Now, these are aerobic exercises, you might say. They are very basic and you can just follow along. But having done, uh, done fitness instructions myself you would be surprised how easily people will mess this up if they only see the forward perspective no he's not green screened he's actually there look at it it's zooming out i was also wondering like is this green screened and then the, the it's zooming out you can look at the the sun and the shadows they are actually there and I must say, this is already a bit a better scene, but uh, <laughs> uh, that's just my opinion. Uh, she's also more into it. Look at that. Yeah, it's uh, they didn't uh, really... Uh, film school was not their um, highest priority here. I think she is actually not on a boat. Yeah, green screens were around, so it, it would have been possible, but uh, for a Dutch production, probably 
probably mm, would have been a bit too expensive and very obvious if it uh, um, would be there. I must say they, 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 from what I've seen from the little of it, they do seem to do a good job in demonstrating the poses. But again, this is very hard to follow if you only do it with audio or, as I said, with only this perspective. Um, No, we all <laughs> we had the game where we did the fapping already. This is just uh, cooling down. <laughs> now back then you really needed the studio, and I think in the Netherlands they mainly had the blue screens actually. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to show this. It's just crazy how this uh, production just came to be. I'm not sure where this was. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, and every time uh, at the end of every exercise, they zoom out. And this is just like in the center somewhere. Like people were probably walking past there and thinking like, oh, well, what were they doing there? Doing exercise before a white screen. That's, uh, that's nice. It's just... Uh, look at this lighting. Must be evening. Must be evening or something. It's just such a strange title. Anyway, uh, I think that's enough of that. Uh, because, you know, we're not actually doing the exercises. They're still doing the, the warming up. By the way, they're doing stretching now. They are... Um, uh, I'm not a fan of static stretches in the warming up. But, uh, oh well, that's... Uh, that might just be me. Uh, I know that's a bit of a debated uh, topic there. Anyway. Uh, should we try to make a program? Uh, well, probably not really worth it. Uh, suppose we can't see the graphics here. This is for your uh, graphs. Yeah, there's nothing here. It asks for your file. Um, I'm just curious if you make a file, if they will actually explain the exercises. I find dynamic, uh, uh, dynamic stretches uh, fine, but I am not a fan of static stretches uh, in front of a exercise, because that tends to kind of, you know, shut down the muscles. Uh, so, preferably, I find... Uh, after exercises, uh, but it, it's always been a bit of a debating uh, thing. Uh, so, you know, as as with everything, do what feels good for you. Uh, oh, we can make... Uh, yeah, we need to make a account here. But yeah, dynamic stretches are fine, you know, where you go uh, uh, bouncing a bit. That's, uh, that, that, that tends to be uh, fine either way. <laughs> okay, maybe, maybe sometimes do things that might not feel the best. <laughs> uh... Yeah, sure, we're from 1875. Why is that even on here? <laughs> uh, uh, this, this doesn't matter, just go. Just want to see, uh, sure. Geef je gewicht in, gemeen. De volgende vraag hebben we... Medical? Oh boy, how oh, oh. How refined is this? No, we don't need to ask the doctor for this. Just, uh, just give us the questions here. We just want to see what it's like. <laughs> Do you have any problems, uh, medical problems right now? Sure, but uh, let's just say no. Are you in therapy? Sure, but let's just say no. Maag, darm of gewrichtsaandoeningen. Using medicines, uh, yeah, but whatever. Nu medicijnen wegens suikerziekte. No, no, there's no uh, diabetes, uh, diabetes here. Nope, no uh, blood thinners. Afgekeurd voor sportbeoefening. This is, uh, this is really in depth for... Uh, 
they, 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 there was a question like, have you been, um, they don't do that anymore, but it used to be like, if you wanted to do high level sports, you needed a medical uh, exam. They don't tend to do that anymore. Um, which I don't know, it's kind of a shame, especially when you've got uh, people uh, falling over uh, lately, unfortunately. Anyway, let's just go for the no, 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 no. We're perfectly healthy. Okay, I, I, I answered everything that I'm healthy. Then you get, well, you're kind of healthy. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So, uh, let's go for level one. Yeah, I doubt it. These things tend to be so easy. Okay, uh, this is kind of nice. Like they give you the option like a program for uh, running or a program for cycling. Uh, you know, generally speaking, running tends to be better or, you know, it, it, less uh, time intensive for more results, but it's more taxing on the body. Uh, but let's uh, let's see if what we get for the cardio training. Do we actually get some ideas? No. Just uh, just more text, huh? Yeah, I'm kind of disappointed that they don't really demonstrate the exercises at all. Swimming is uh, an excellent exercise. Yeah, because it's a full body exercise. Um, and you know, it it, it also uh, is kind of handy that you don't really, um, you know, it, it, it's normal to feel wet while still swimming, so that that's a plus. <laughs> Are they actually... Uh, I didn't hear what she was saying. It's actually a program whilst you are running, because that would be odd, because we didn't... Oh no, it's just uh, the, the thing again. Yeah, just the same scene, huh? No, 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 uh, uh, nope. They are not explaining the exercises. I am, uh, I'm kind of disappointed. Uh, yeah, public pools. Well, you know, they, they, the public pools have a lot of filtering. Uh, so if, if one thing is safe, it tends to be uh, public pools, honestly. Um... Although, I suppose the high humidity in the air does make a bit of a uh, risk for airborne viruses, I suppose, which, you know, is a big, uh, big concern nowadays. But swimming pools, they are so open space and they have a lot of ventilation. So, because, you know, otherwise the fumes are just uh, nasty. So, generally speaking, they tend to be fairly safe and especially in the water it's it's amazing how uh, humans are still swimming in it because uh, about nothing else can survive in that water because those filthy humans keep pissing in it <laughs> because they can't be bothered to uh, actually go out of the pool anyway uh, this is another reference material uh, uh, disc we We'll only check out for a bit, uh, just to see what it's like. I don't know what this one is like, um, but this is, uh, 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 you know, uh, if you want to learn skiing with uh, Alberto. Alberto, uh, what's his name? Alberto... I don't know anything about skiing. Uh, Tumba. Tumba. It's a cool uh, PS1 game. But this one is actually in English, so we can actually hear what they're saying. Yeah, and you've got some people who are also pooing in the pools, unfortunately. It's, uh, you know, people be people. And uh, generally speaking, uh, people are pretty nasty. Especially the younger ones. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go for English. In the world of skiing, Alberto Tomba is the best-known star, but he's also one of the best technically, too. 
In terms of style, it's the instructors of the Federation who represent the absolute top. In our lessons, the instructors will take us on a voyage of discovery among the features of great skiing. Alberto Tomba will be the demonstrator when it comes to racing and competition, but he'll also be giving us precious advice about our lessons and everyday skiing. Tutti pronti? Possiamo cominciare? Ready? Can we start? Okay, off on our lessons then. Yeah, I hate that too in pools where you have to slalom around everyone. And uh, I actually also have someone who's once, uh, you know, coming. He was swimming beneath me. I didn't see him. And then he all of a sudden he came up. <laughs> I so hate that. Oh, man. Uh, and yeah, this, uh, you know, it would be kind of funny, you know, if I was exciting. Yeah, we are going to play Toomba, guys. And uh, we have this one. Uh, what well, the game for some reason has actually a different uh, uh, title. You've got is it Tomba in the US and Tombi here? I I keep forgetting, keep mixing them. I do have the game, uh, the European version. I think it's Tombi here, but uh, that's a really fun game on uh, PS One. Anyway, let's uh, let's learn about this disc. Why don't we? You were looking at the main menu. It is possible to have access to all the different functions of the course from here. What's that accent? The main menu consists of two parts. If you want to move from one part to the other, choose the icon down on the left. Here, you can choose from any of the eight sections or see them one after the other by using the Play All icon. You can also consult the glossary, which contains the main skiing terms, thanks to the text icon. If you want to end viewing and quit the program, choose the icon down on the right. Once you have chosen your section... Oh, Mr. Vario, you, you have lesson. not seen many CDI or games. Them, they all the other, explain the what play the play button control. actually does, or the exit During button. The lesson, by pressing an action button on the remote control, a list of the following functions... But yeah, this is uh, fairly Return basic. Return to main menu. Return to section menu. What's the that one on the right? Continue lesson. Forward fast. Slow motion. Listen to Tomba's advice. Um, advice, doubts, okay. Or want to learn more uh, thanks for explaining. That. Uh, yeah, well, it's it was just a new age of uh, you know. Uh, most of these things didn't come with the instruction booklet anymore. They figured, you know, we can we have so much storage space on the CD now, so we can just put it in there. And uh, but they really had to learn like what what to expect from people. But if you look at instruction booklets, they also are very basic. Like each one has to explain to you, um, you know, uh, th that you actually need to power on a console. Console, for example, is it needed? Well. Probably someone was mistaken and sent the disc back because it didn't work or something. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's just like growing pains I find uh, in these earlier uh, interactive discs where they just, you know, made it a bit too simplistic. <laughs> but uh, the, the fun side is now that we have just some really, really funny... Uh, Top secret skiing? Huh. <laughs> I I don't like skiing. I went skiing once in my life. It was for school. Uh, I didn't like it. It... Uh, I don't know. Just not my thing. I get why some people like it. I mean, you get... Uh, you, you can build some nice... Uh, 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 speeds, but everything is white, man. I don't like it. It's way too light. I'm a, I'm a child of the night. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, all that snow, it's way too bright. Uh, let's go warm up. What happened to Michael Schumacher about 10 years ago? I don't know, Ed. 
See, this is how little I know about racing. Uh, but you know... Uh, But yeah, this the looks like exercises are very important. Naturally, they can be different according to the ability of the skier. But keep in mind that for everybody, it's important to start the day skiing with a good warm-up and gradually, without rushing immediately down a very difficult slope, because that will harden the muscles and make one tired much sooner. But let's start from the beginning. The first thing to learn for a beginner is how to hold the poles. You see the instructor is showing the right way to hold the pole with the strap under the palm of your hand. This in order to have a good grip and be able to it's use good, the pole. It's good, you know, really the basics it's for safety. A good uh, I did not know that or maybe, you know, I forgot because, it, I, I, because I don't keep really keep up with that, uh, uh, with racing this news, especially the nothing the wrong way to hold the pole. aside from the tracks. By children who obviously find this a much more natural way of holding it. But uh, yeah, I kind of like that I do the basics on, on how to go for safety. I had, I had trouble even getting to the slope, to be honest, like... You also don't look the most gracious on the, on the skis if you do the warming up, I must say. <laughs> now, the correct warm-up for your legs, the abductors, we all know how important the legs are for a skier. A skier uses all his muscles, but obviously the legs are the core of skiing. Now, our instructor starts performing the basic movements of skiing and starts becoming familiar with her equipment, something which you should do too when you start skiing. It's, uh, they really go this through everything really fast. How to walk on snow. It won't be easy to start with. How to walk on snow? No well, don't use route, skis. Which won't bend or will only start. bend very little towards the front. You must alternate the movements by bending your knees slightly, sliding your skis, helping yourselves with the poles, and yeah, those these those shoes are terrible because you can't bend your sliding. ankles almost. We can now watch this so you're very stiff. In order to put himself on the fall line. This is the way one is first taught to change direction, but it's an exercise that one should try only after having fairly good training, both physical and... Yeah, physical. don't do that as a beginner, I say. <laughs> now you see the typical side step, which is the most... Yeah, these clothes are uh, kind of cool, huh? And it's, way, it's really it's the, the, uh, the 90s. With the edges of your skis that will need to be perfected. And, uh, but, you can start by but yeah, I, I remember, like, slope. even getting to the slope, you had to ride these Another lifts, Another important thing and they, uh, fall, but how to they, get uh, they yeah, basically you drag you along to the top, the but sometimes there's a corner. And of course I didn't see that, so, you know, every time one of those corners come, I had to learn it by just whoop, going straight, <laughs> and then going down again to go again, and then remember where the corner was. <laughs> It was almost flat. awful. Did they? Start moving by did they with your poles. go so about the importance so of getting up and not actually show how to get up? You bend slightly forward <laughs> and push with your arms. Now, if the slope is a bit steeper, one push should be enough. Which I also go. remembered was indeed quite hard uh, to actually get up once you've uh, fallen down, which uh, you know happens quite a lot. You get a lot of practice. Um, but yeah, this is basically video instructions, and uh, that's it, I suppose. What's, what's a snowplow? I mean, I know what is a snowplow, but on skiing? It's kind of cool, you the know, I never... And the snowplow turn are the first exercises to... Got... Beginners must definitely uh, learn you know, sometimes these reference materials the are kind of cool to down. just explore. Uh, what's actually a stip button, because I was kind of... Curious about it. In the snowplow, be careful not to bow down too much by looking at the tips of your skis. Try to keep looking forward all the time. That's it, huh? I mean, if you're a fan, I guess that would be cool. Uh, but yeah, kind of weird that. I, d I don't know, I, d I don't like it when they, uh, you still have the original voice and then put the voice over it. Uh, which of course is kind of ironic because I'm doing the same thing now as I uh, are talking. <laughs> uh, what's, what's the glossary like? I, I suppose kind of like a uh, basic encyclopedia. Uh, 
What should we look for? There is uh, there's nothing with the N, huh? There is something with... No. What's in the R? It's basically the CDI... Li there is a CDI keyboard, but I don't think it actually works with these kind of titles. Uh, CDI keyboard was very limited, mostly for the online uh, stuff. The root sounds uh, rudimentary. But yeah, this is uh, just the basic CDI reference material and you you know, you've got something like hyperlinks. Uh, very typical for, for these kind of titles. I'm actually kind of curious, like, maybe at, at one point um, I can actually record all the video sessions and, you know, put them up there. Uh, might be interesting. I don't know. Um, what do you guys think? Would that be interesting? Uh, if I can even do that without uh, getting slapped One over the hand. Tell the kind of sequence of turns by judging how rounded they are. Uh -huh. A full type of rounded turn means it is a parallel. A medium type of rounded turn means it is a serpentine. I like that name. And a short type of rounded turn means it is a vedel. What was the what was the last one? Okay. All right, Ed. Hey, best uh, best of luck for you uh, on your commentary. And take care, man. Thank you very much for uh, being here. Well, it lasted. Anyway, let's check out uh, something else because uh, this is basically reference material. Yeah, maybe I'll just record the all the video scenes and make a uh, skiing. Tutorial thing at some point. I don't know uh, It's kind of interesting to just go through that and maybe there's something really cool and funny in there I mean it that uh, did have of course this thing is broken. It did have uh, uh, some secret skiing techniques, didn't it? That'd be cool <laughs> um, But yeah right now uh, and yes yeah, serpentine the uh, boss from freedom planet. I still need to finish that uh, um, uh, but oh well, uh, we'll get to that. I, I've been really uh, running behind everything that I actually want to do lately. Uh, this is a children's musical theater, which is a, uh, a kid's title. Uh, as I understand it, this allows you to change a couple of words and it will change in the song. And um, that's basically it. You know, you, you change a word and it, it gets planted into the song or something. Uh, and these songs are animated and usually that, that can be quite hilarious. So, you know, let's check that out. And yeah, these boxes are always broken. And this is what I meant, like this, this, this has no manual at all. It's just a sheet of paper. There's no manual because uh, who needs a manual when you've got an interactive uh, disc? Which can tell you all you need to know. So let's uh, let's see what this guy is like, mm. and if we can uh, bob along with some music, and let's check out the audio levels again. Is this alright? Hope so. I've been fiddling around with my audio levels as well and placement of the microphone, so I hope I'm getting uh, coming across uh, uh, all right. Intro time. Very basic animation, but you know, kind of stylized that way. So, not too bad. Welcome to Children's Musical Theater. I'm Swamp Daddy, a song-making buddy. We're here to make beautiful music together. So go on did, down did, and choose just what you want to do. Did he... What was his name? Did, did he call himself Swamp Daddy? 
Hey there, Austin. Great to see you. Uh, we haven't actually been to many games. We only had uh, some reference uh, uh, titles. We are starting to get to more of the interactive stuff, and uh, we are now uh, playing music, uh, children's musical theater, um, which is a kids, well, game, kind of interactive thing. And apparently, we have, uh, if I heard it correctly, uh, we've got this dude over here, Mr. Swamp Daddy. <laughs> Uh, let's see how to how to use the disc because I don't know how to use the disc. Now here in the theater, you can go to four different places. When you're done, just click on exit to leave Children's Musical Theater and come back real soon. How to use the disc is where you are now. If you just want to hear the songs and not play with the disc, why well, just click on the audience. In SongMaker, you can change the style, the lyrics, and where you want to hear the song. Okay. Wherever you go, if you get stuck, Easy enough. just click on the help button, and I'll give you a hand. So there's basically only two options. Just listen to the songs or make them. Uh, yeah, again, this this just has some songs where you can kind of slightly alter what it's doing. Uh, but we're, I, 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 I never tried this game. This one is totally new for me. Uh, so that always makes me kind of interested in the animation, of course, of the CDI. So let's just uh, listen to some songs. And I don't blame you, the Pirate Gamer, uh, because, uh, yeah, that uh, skiing disc was a bit boring. Lots of southern, uh, southern vibes here. Climbing up to my tree house, secret place in the sky. Watching the clouds just hanging. Waving as the planes go by Waving as the planes go by I hear a yell from beneath me Asking me where I've been I see the tree pointing at me But I don't believe it's happening I don't believe it's happening I've got a treehouse friend that nobody will believe I uh, honestly don't know what to say. I mean, it sounds okay, kind of. Tell me he was a maple, and his uncle was a mighty fur. It's kind of wacky, but you know, you can see kids uh, bobbing along with this. It's actually lasting much longer than I expected too. Usually these songs are super short. Outside with him and shoot the breeze. Hello. 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 Yeah, I, I can, you know, I can kind of imagine that the young kid would uh, would still enjoy this. Uh, it, it doesn't sound too bad. I mean, <laughs> it's not gonna hit number one anytime soon. <laughs> but for a kid's uh, musical thing. different style I guess Many worlds, anywhere I can go. 
I uh, I doubt these got released on anything else in this game. Uh, maybe this game also came out on PC. <laughs> are you are your dreams dead bad, Austin? <laughs> So uh, I, I, let's uh, let's check out what we can actually do when we uh, when we cut these things apart. This is uh, children's musical theater. Or was a music theater? Children's theater? No, children's musical theater. Uh, I don't know. Rehearsal. Let's let's go. I mean, we could go to the help again, but that sounds. Uh, uh oh. Dream song, tree house song. So there's, there's four songs, I guess. Let's uh, try the monster song. Or wait, we should we should probably do one we've already heard, huh? To uh, make it a bit different. Or not? Oh, I uh, didn't want to do that. Even even losing at uh, kids games, great. <laughs> uh, let's uh, let's do the treehouse song, I suppose. Uh, ah, yeah, and here you go. Here you can uh, actually change the lyrics uh, to three different words. Yeah, I think. And how it works then is then it basically places uh, places this into the scene like whatever you choose here oh there's two uh, what or does it both change yeah it becomes clouds so yeah that just changes the scene I think in the in the song but wouldn't that also mean that they need to sing that so does that mean that they I can't imagine that Back then, they had the technology to intersplice uh, different words into a song. I don't... F so... I'm kind of curious how they uh, how they made this. Because I think these words, they also need to sing, right? So that would mean they have sung this, uh, you know, to get all of the different variations. How many times? <laughs> I don't know. Let's uh, let's go for the strong oak, I suppose. Yeah, sure, buddy. Whatever. Uh, it 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 is a very. Um, Big song indeed. Oh, okay. So now do we play it? Can we actually do anything? Oh, it actually shows you the notes too and the uh, and the chords. That's cool. Climbing up to my treehouse, funny place in the sky. Watching the clouds just a hanging, waving as the planes go by, waving as the planes go by. Hear a sound from beneath me Asking me where I've been I see the tree pointing to me But I don't believe it's happening Don't believe it's happening I've got a treehouse friend that nobody will believe This is a different recording than we heard before, I, I think, huh? With him and shoot the breeze. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the words we chose as the oak tree are in the song and it doesn't sound like it's spliced in. So did this guy just sing this song like 20 times to get all the different combinations? That'd be insane. But I can't detect any splicing and I can't imagine Back in 1991 that they, for a CDI game, were able to do that. 
looks just like him. It's, that's that's really kind of neat. Uh, what else do we have? <laughs> Not feeling it, Ben? What's uh, what's the perform? Because that all uh, also sounded a bit like a performance. Uh, yeah, let's just go to do the same one. See if it's different again. Oh, now you can actually change it. Wait, classical. It it sounded like a really a bit of a country song, like intended for country. So I can't imagine. And you can make up the words again. Let's just uh, play it as it is, I suppose. And it shows you the screen now. Up to my tree house, <laughs> funny place in the sky. Watching the clouds just hanging, waving as the planes go by. Waving as the planes go by. <laughs> I hear I mean... a sound from beneath me, asking me where I've been. I see the tree pointing to me, but I don't believe it's happening. But I don't believe it's happening. It's kind of an opera. Wow, this is so nuts. Like, someone... They really did went to a lot of effort to put all of this together for just four songs. That's... That's so crazy. I'm not sure, like, how many... Like, there is only four songs. Uh, let, let's try uh, let's try a different one here, the monster song. So, how long would kids be preoccupied with this? What makes a monster scary is it big or better? Harry, can you feel it? Can you feel it? Do your hands look cold and clammy like you've been hit with a double whammy? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? The monster's so scary and it's so mean. The monster's so scary and it's deep on green. It's bad, it's so mean. If you don't uh, yeah, what was it? You what makes a oh, you just choose the uh, instruments here. It. Okay. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Ah, that's less interesting then. Uh, but that, that sounds like a, a bit of a rock song. Uh, are you telling me that there is also a classical version <laughs> and a uh, country version of that? I don't know. I find this more interesting than I think that it it it, it. like I can imagine that kids would love this for about uh, a half an hour, but afterwards I'd say that I don't really see that they would have any lasting value in this because there are only four songs. But you know, in during the time, I'm having fun. <laughs> I mean, I'm just I'm just amazed that something. They really must have put a lot of effort in it. What makes a monster scary? Is it big or bad or hairy? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? <laughs> Do your hands feel cold and clammy? Like you've been hit by a double whammy? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? The monster so scary and Yeah, I think this does have the biggest soundtrack on CDI. I, I, I'm more fascinated than than anything on this one. Uh you just said Like this doesn't have this just does not have lasting appeal, but it it's I, I dig it. I dig it. 
yeah, let's uh, let's just uh, go for country, I guess, and uh, see uh, what that's like. Yeah, they're, they're scared of the, uh, the school bus, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> what makes a school bus carry? Is a big good bird to carry? Can you see it? Can you see it? Do your hands feel cold and clammy? Have you been hit by a big salami? Can you see it? Can you see it? The bus is so I mean, I, I, I'm kind of impressed that they went through this effort to just record all this stuff. Uh, we should move on to the next one because we've basically seen everything there is to see. Uh, we got the idea that there was the point, but... Just, just, just the big... Why? Why, you know? Yeah, the animation changes with uh, the, uh, the the words that you choose. It's just look how many people actually worked on this. Swamp Daddy, see, see, he was called Swamp Daddy. Who calls it? <laughs> For a kid's title. I don't know. Is, is that a, is that a uh, southern thing to... Do? Swap daddy. I'm kind of impressed with this one. Was this from 1990? Wow. Yeah. I'm, I'm really curious how they actually make this. It's kind of cool. Uh, I imagine that this game would really be uh, cool to have, you know, in, in well, maybe not cool for the, uh, for the workers there, but maybe like, you know, in a dentist's office, uh, they also had like these, um, uh, these, these demo things now and then uh, you basically had a you know where you have the lego corner nowadays you had a cdi corner i can't imagine a title like this being fun although not for the other uh, patients in the room i suppose <laughs> uh, anyway um for the one game you know it's funny because this game is not rare at all but i don't actually uh, i never picked it up this is uh, uh, arguably the first cdi game i ever got to experience uh, with my uncle this is um, a, a great day at the races. Um, uh, the Pirate Game Boy, uh, a lot of games were developed in, the, in 1990. And I think the first consoles uh, were actually released at the end of 1990 in Europe uh, over here. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure. But... My uncle was one of the very first to did own one and he had this game uh, and I never actually got it. Usually you can find this game easily in a stack of something. And look at that price, man. Uh, I'm not sure if it's coming up, but uh, it, it was 80 guilders. I can't imagine anyone paying this much for this game, but uh, apparently my uncle did. The idiot. <laughs> uh, I will say that this game, as I remember it, well, you can barely call it a game as well, but I suppose it's uh, it's more of a game than we had before. But it uh, no, this is not like Video Speedway. What what do you do at uh, horse races? <laughs> Uh, did Nino Kuni even have Gilders? I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, that feels like, uh, kind of bad because you so graciously uh, gave me Nino Kuni the first one and I love the game. Uh, but I don't know what the, uh, what the currency was actually called. Um, but yeah, this is, uh, this is a betting game. 
you get fake money and you bet on the horse races. That's basically it. Uh, and again, being a very early game, it has once again how to use this disc. And if you're still confused, it also has a help section. Um, what the big... Um, where I want to give this game credit is actually in this section. Because this is actually a giant uh, reference of horse riding in general, horse races. Um, and I know that is a very tiny, tiny niche. It is not a niche I belong in. But I must say, for the stuff that is in here, uh, if you are interested in that, it is very, very thorough. Uh, anyway, let's uh, let's just check out to give you a bit of a sampling here. Uh, and look, <laughs> even in history, there is uh, more stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I have another history thing coming up. So let's uh, give us the basic history here. They came to England over 200 years ago. Three magnificent stallions. The Dali Arabian, the Godolphin Arabian, and the Bayali Turk. They're remembered today not for their beauty or for any races they won, but for the breed of horses they started. The thoroughbred, the fastest animal in the world. This looks like very, very old footage. Um, curious if they, if this was like in the public domain when they actually got this. Every thoroughbred has a yeah. little bit of the Darley. It does look like archive film. The first American racetrack was built on Long Island in 1784 when owners rode their own horses and it was considered disrespectful to gamble on the outcome of a race. Well, that changed. Later, slaves and stable boys rode for their owners. And in 1831, thoroughbreds became an official breed developed for the sole purpose of racing. Munning, Troy, and Stubbs painted the upper crust of the English sporting scene when thoroughbreds raced four or five times a day over a hilly four mile course. In 1892, Edward Moybridge photographed the movements of a galloping horse. By setting up 12 sequential cameras, he photographed their running style, demonstrating that all four hoofs left the ground simultaneously. The pictures were made to settle a hotly contested bet. Weighing 1,000 pounds and standing about 64 inches or 16 hands high, today's thoroughbreds are slightly taller and faster than their ancestors, but otherwise they've hardly changed. The Kentucky Derby, which some call the most famous two minutes in sports, is practically the same race as when it started in 1875, except the winner... Yeah, I agree, Mr. Wario. This, this, this is more what I was talking about. You know what I was also expecting with the fitness thing, where you have more of an in-depth look at the things, the, 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 where they actually explain stuff, and this is so in-depth. It's just industry. such a weird niche to make a game on, more than like one of the first games, too, even. England's Epsom Derby and Royal Ascot Although I well suppose, um, I, we're just going to skip this, I suppose back then this was a bit bigger. Um, you know, it was a bigger scene, horse racing. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just so, so interesting. And it's what's uh, fun about, well, fun. Um, apparently some people find it fun. But this game also in that uh, uh, section teaches you how to actually bet on horses. Um, so you can actually practice that then on the game disc. Uh, so let's just do that now. Uh, let's not learn how to actually do it because that is way too much uh, too complicated for me. Uh, I, I'm not much of a gambler anyway, at least not a smart gambler. Uh, as, as far as a gambler can be smart, I suppose. I, I don't understand cricket. I uh, I don't uh, I, 
I can kind of see the appeal in, in gambling. Um, but, you know, with a strict budget, like you go to a casino and you say like, okay, I, I just bring uh, 50, 50 euros or something, you know, and just have a fun evening out. I can kind of see the appeal in that. Go to the races. Um, and I, I, I do enjoy a game of poker now and then, I suppose. Uh, you played cricket? I did actually do some horse riding uh, as a kid, which was awesome. Uh, it was, was like a program on school where normally there was uh, swimming. In, in the Netherlands, it's standard for schools to have a swimming program. Uh, and then one year uh, they, they asked, like, uh, instead of swimming, would you like to go uh, horse riding? And sure. <laughs> that That's awesome. And it, it was awesome. Uh well, I'm not sure if we do all races, but let's just click on all races, I suppose. First race! <laughs> well, just don't stand at the hind side of the, of the horses. <laughs> and generally the ones you find at the... Uh, what, what's it called in English, where you actually ride the horses? Uh, they tend to be uh, very nice and well behaved. Uh, although having said that, there uh, was one uh, at our place who kept snapping at you with his teeth, which, you know, wouldn't really hurt if they bite, but still, it was a bit, uh, was a bit mean of him. Uh, what do we do here? Uh, uh, I have no clue. Make a bet? Yeah? Or pass perform? Or, oh, wait, these are the horses. Yeah. Uh, Apple call? He's 20 to 1, that, that's not good. A gigabyte? That sounds cool. Let's see, gigabyte. Yeah, I have... There was one time where... Uh, it was... <laughs> it was so stupid too. It was like the, the exam day and we were out with the horses and... Uh, uh, all of a sudden my horse jumped. I don't know from what, but all of a sudden I was sitting right in in her neck almost. And it was the one day they brought out the camera for filming. <laughs> Let's see, what's our tip? This one's a nice filly and can probably hang on for a piece of the prize. <laughs> What's, what's with the sound effect? Yeah, I, I, uh, I've, I, you know, I had no experience with horses before that time when I uh, got to ride, and uh, it, it was really fun. Let's uh, let's see another hot tip. Uh, this is fifty to one. 50 to 1, I would imagine it's very bad. Can run all day, and that's probably how long it'll take this one to finish. Now I get the sound effect, I suppose. Uh, yeah, well, let's just make a bet. Uh, obviously, uh, Gigabyte is our, is our dude here. He's winning. Uh, what is PNS? I don't know. W is win, right? <laughs> uh, accept that. Oh, wait. Probably put in 50 bucks, I suppose. Accept that. Yeah, there we go. And let's, let's race. Let's race. I'm Trevor Denman. Welcome to the races. We have a field of five runners going in today's first race. They're starting to load in the gate right now. In fact, the flag is up. Let's go and see what happens. What? What? A three to one is is like uh, I don't know. Uh, it's too much more. 
Five on the outside broke well, so did number That's one it, on huh? the inside gate, and the orange number three is coming through to be third, then two, four has no <laughs> early speed and dropped out of it. Number one showing the early speed, joined now by number three. On the outside in the blue is number five, in the gold number four is starting to close, and two on the inside. Come one, on, Gigabyte, one, what are you three, doing? On the outside, <laughs> catching them stride for stride, and five has now gone by. Here comes number four with a late run. Five hanging on from four. Five there he comes, there he goes. No, you five, bastard. Well, we lost it all, guys. Uh, wait, only 50 bucks. You know, on June 6th, sixth day of the month, sixth month of the year, a horse number six in the sixth race of the day was named, guess what, Route 66. My friend bet $65,000 on the horse. You're huh? right, wouldn't you know? The horse ran sixth. <laughs> okay, the... <laughs> What's with the, with the random stories? I mean... Well, and that's basically it. But back then, this... Yeah, that was... That was... <laughs> Why 65,000? But yeah, that, that's basically it. That's betting on the horses and you get that scene. But uh, yeah, back then, this was this was the shit guy. This was, this was the shizzle. This was... Uh, you know, we had the NES and then we had this and it was uh, it was impressive because people were actually talking. You saw some things that the NES couldn't do, barely. <laughs> uh, uh, I think in Japan uh, they did actually have a Famicom uh, game where you could bet life on uh, horse races. Uh... I think I saw something of that. Hey there, Daniel. Great to see you. Uh, but yeah. Uh, how about we actually go to something else? Because this is just horse racing and... Uh, lust. Oh. <laughs> We've already had enough of that, huh? Uh, but yeah, this just a cool game. I think this... If you are a fan of... Horse racing... Uh, it it would really be a cool game because of that in-depth reference section of the game. But just gambling, nah, not so much fun. That's uh, that's just weird. Ah, thank you, Daniel. That's awesome of you. Uh, thank you so much. We have another game here. Um, which I actually did not own yet. Well, game. It's another kind of reference. But I think there's also a game in here. And that is uh, uh, Great British Golf. Which uh, apparently is from the British Museum of Golf. Which uh, you guys actually have a golf museum. Really? <laughs> I mean... Uh, <laughs> not that we're one to talk. We've, we've got a, a museum of sheets. <laughs> so it's just uh, our standard I suppose but uh, hmm, it might be a bit loud let's go into the uh, British high life of uh, old time golf there's actually quite a few golf titles on the CDI which uh Another one of those sports, you know, where you imagine why, why, why that sport in particular. Uh, although, to be fair, golf is kind of a more static sport, I guess. So it kind of works for the CDI. You can have pretty graphics and not have too much moving. And yeah, here's another big big reference uh, guide uh, so yeah let's just uh, check out what that's like oh wait there's more again quite in depth apparently wait golf existed in the middle ages or something I must admit I did not know that I mean the cover kind of gives it away too I suppose but just seeing it like history and then before uh, 1575 uh, or 57 uh, anyway let's uh, check it out mm. 
Golf was one of many ball and stick games played during the Middle Ages. What seems to have distinguished Scottish golf was that the target was always a hole in the ground. Dutch golf, up until the 18th century, was a similar type of game, but the target varied from a hole in the ground, which was rare, to much more common above the ground targets, such as trees and doors. We have beef! It was often played on ice and was a popular subject for 17th Ours century. Ours came English. first! <laughs> Although there were many trading links between Scotland and the Netherlands, the two games developed in a very different manner, with Dutch golf becoming confined to a small court in the 18th century and then virtually dying out. A similar type of game to Dutch golf was La Cole, which was played across country, aiming at above the ground targets. Pal Mal, or Jeu de Mai, was played in the court, and the object of the game was to hit the ball through a hoop. I've never heard of any of those well. Uh, the last one actually sounds a bit like the cricket we know here over uh, in the Netherlands. Or croquet, I suppose it's it's called. I don't know. It, it's been forever. Uh, and yeah, that that thing of the Dutch where we just say uh, the door is a uh, is is the goal. Uh, basically, probably what happened is that we hit that and we said that's the goal now. Uh, did I exit? I did not mean to exit. <laughs> Yep, I exit. Let's uh, let's head back. <laughs> Great. As I said, even even in reference guides, I can lose, guys. <laughs> let's check out the actual game. But again, uh, it's, it's kind of neat, like these demonstrations, and uh, especially with this one and also the previous one we saw. You notice that there is um, the videos are more. Uh, slideshows and or if there is videos they are very very small and that basically had uh, to do with you know that the, the digital video cartridge wasn't as popular yet or wasn't even on market yet so they had to downscale all of those video files to actually uh, be able to play them so this disc would also not need the digital video cartridge which uh, is neat but if you compare it to later uh, titles, you know, it, it is a big loss of uh, video quality. Uh, and yeah, Daniel. Uh, no, I did not want to do the intro. I wanted to actually find the game. Um, yeah, for some reason, almost all CDI titles have an exit button to get you back out of the prompt. And uh, oh boy. If your parents caught you not using the exit button because it would destroy the disc and the system. <laughs> Which of course is total nonsense, but uh, you know. Let's play with some golf here. Which is uh, very Scottish oriented. I guess it ori originated in Scotland. Uh, let's, uh, let's be the, the captain, I suppose. Ah, uh, the feathery goody or, or or Heschel. I have no clue what these balls, what the difference is. Let's just go with the goody that looks like most like a normal ball, I think. Uh, player two. Well, we don't have a player two, but I guess we can't play otherwise. Uh... I don't know, uh, should we lose to the woman or should we lose to the old man? <laughs> let's, uh, let's have Mary a go and just use the same ball. Oh wait, I should have probably used a different ball because I need to play them both. Uh, okay, so... Ah, here's the map. Cool. Strong wind. Great! First hole and already strong wind, huh? Uh, 360 yards. <laughs> uh, which is the wood for? What? Uh, what's pressing? Choose a club. Yeah, I don't know which club, dude, or lad, or what? What do you call an old grumpy Scottish guy? The brassy is a wooden club that sends the Haskell ball about a hundred and eighty yards. The cleek is a long iron which sends the ball about 140 yards. The mashi iron sends the ball about 100 yards, and the niblick 
the short iron sends the ball about 60 yards. Of course, all this assumes there is no wind, high, and that you can hit the ball properly. Now choose a club and let's see how good you are. Thanks for the vote of confidence there. Uh, I love the Scottish names here. <laughs> uh, let's see, what did he say? 180, 140, 160, the lowest one. The Niblick. Uh, let's go for the Brescia. Don't blame me if that's the wrong club. What's the wrong club? No, we... we uh, let's see. Uh, the wind was going this way, right? So we should probably turn it... Wait, to, yeah, you are turning. Uh, how far should we turn? I don't know. Uh, let's go. We actually hit the ball at least. And it flew out. So, even further. Never mind the birds. That's two shots for out of bounds. I know. At least that never changed. Uh, yeah, we should use the brassy. You give the impression of knowing what you are doing. Does your opponent agree? Uh, and we should go further to the left. Is that the furthest you can go? Yep. Okay, this should do. Do I actually need to push anything else here? or Because now I don't... I push once on hit and that is basically it. Whoa! Would you be any better without a caddy? I don't know. Yeah, there's no power gaze as at all here, uh, and I'm wondering if there. Yeah, there's only you can only go two sides, two steps to the left. He only went one, and she went two, and it 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 was the difference was the width of the field. Uh, let's see if he goes to the same spot. Like the cursor is still on the screen here, so uh, maybe I can. Push it again. Wow. That's a bra we shot. I'm impressed. It was exactly the same execution as with Mary, so there is a lot of randomization there, I suppose. Uh, but now the wind is actually on our side, I guess. Uh, we should go with the Bressy again. That goes I to hope first. You're sure, about that club. sure, I'm sure. Let's actually try to hit it. Whoa, where, what? Out of bounds left. <laughs> what can I say? Please don't say anything. That was, what? Uh, maybe not. I just, uh, Direction could here. Choice. Let's see it how could you be. Hit it. Could be. Let's see. What? Would you believe it? No. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. <laughs> what I do? How do you? Pr how do you? How do you prevent that? <laughs> I, we barely made that uh, little river there. Good shot. Or stream. No, didn't relax. This is sudden death. Yeah, let's uh, let's not relax. Because it only took us like eight shots to get there. Yeah, of course I'm using Brassy. Are you are you sure? Should we? Well, I'm I'm going to trust you. We we we'll, we we'll go for the click. Yeah, I'm a real golf expert, as you can as you can tell. 
At least the click didn't break. No. <laughs> Going for the big one, eh? It's out of bounds. I noticed. <laughs> just wait, like I am going to end up in that small stream. Just just wait. Okay, let's uh, let's go for the click. Let's uh, turn to the left once. And let's give it the old wallop. And see where we end up. Well, that's better. No, that's not. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Even the best do it sometimes. Uh, what post, Ben? Did it get eaten? Uh, how far? 80 yards, huh? Uh, I guess we should go to the meshy. Now remember the basics and impress your opponent. Ah, right, yeah, well, I, I know nothing of golf, uh, basically. Um, the Pirate Bay Game Boy, I think Palm Springs Open, from what I've seen so far, this looks like more of a gag game. Palm Springs Open is, I think, you know, more fleshed out. Ooh, 35 yards, that's, uh, that's a small... Uh, Lop, or how do you call that in, <laughs> in golf? <laughs> chip, chip, yeah, chip, right? Uh, but yeah, I think Palm Springs Open is uh, is a bit better from what I've seen so far. Uh, but it's hard to judge, you know, because uh, it's the first time I check this out. This might be more fun just for having one go, because Palm Springs Open is... Can we in? Can we get very close? Hey. Palm Springs Open is, is kind of hard to get into, but once it clicks, it's actually kind of good. And you can actually improve in that uh, quite a bit and, and just hit the pars consistently. Um, Hold this and it's all over. Okay, so just a putting, huh? Here we go. It was so hard. I can't I aim. To win, even if you don't. But I couldn't aim. I mean, is this just look based? What the? <laughs> Have you been drinking already? Yeah. What of it? <laughs> You're Scottish. You should appreciate. Or You're probably going to lose. Let's try and. Uh, Yeah, you can. Okay, so you Only can make a difference when you click. There is a kind of a power a power meter in that sense, I suppose, although it's invisible. Don't give them another chance. So that's uh, that's kind of cool. Still too fast. My five-year-old laddie could do better. What are those shoes, by the way, that he's wearing? <laughs> Get in there. Good putt, but you'll be lucky to escape. Well, that's a hawk, isn't it? What was it? Parrot. Hold this. There we go. Did did they? Uh... Done it without me. Oh, Captain has eleven and Mary eight. Of course, we got beaten by Mary. The result of Mary versus a captain is a win for Mary, Queen of Scots. She's a braw wee player. Yeah, kind uh, kind of interesting. Like you know, yeah. And there's only one hole. That's kind of a shame. There's no more holes. Uh, but there's a little distraction. Like this. 
Yeah, it was her. Uh, but you know, as a bit of an extra addition to a uh, title that is from the museum to just teach you about the history of golf. It's kind of nice that it's in there, I suppose. Trivia quiz. Oh boy, this can't be good. <laughs> Do they actually narrate? Yeah, that's fitting music, all right. Uh, choose what hole you want to start on. Okay, hole one, I suppose. Who says player one uh, to tee off? Is this like the difficulty? Let's just go for par, I suppose. Who won the amateur championship in 1930? Oh, that that was uh, pfft, John de Forest, of course. Oh. oh. Yeah, wow, this <laughs> Which player won the ladies' championship three years in succession in the 1930s? Wow, this is uh, this is the par question, sir. Oh. <laughs> uh, wow, these questions are tough. Like, it's not just basic knowledge about golf, it's actually about... The, the players um, and you know these are players that are no longer play anymore that's uh, that's quite something yeah I, mean, I, I won't get far into that I'm sure um, maybe that's also in the history books so you can first check those out and then go for uh... oh this one actually does have a manual two whole sheets uh, and yeah, just to demonstrate, well, should we check out the exit? What's cool about the exit option of CDI games is that there's always the uh, credits and sometimes the cool music. Yeah, it'd be terrible. Um, CDI actually had some really cool like trivia games and such. Um, or game show games in general. It's something that it actually did uh, really well in. But you gotta be into that stuff, don't you? But yeah, this is kind of a, a cool bit of, uh, um, you know, CDI typical thing where you have the credits when you exit the title to the uh, CDI's main screen. And if you don't care for them, yeah, just open the lid. <laughs> uh, and that's kind of the shame about CDI uh, it is very very finicky as soon as something goes wrong with the disc reading it will stop the game and uh, you're basically out of the game uh, let's see let's see let's see let's see okay now here's one <laughs> or two it's actually two I actually had one of these uh, I had this one but it was in super pure shape Yeah, your disc may be dirty. That's indeed what you get uh, quite often. Uh, but these uh, Sesame Street titles are kind of interesting. Um, they are in English. I don't think there ever was a Dutch version. And that's probably to do with the fact that uh, the Dutch version... Uh, let me just go with my disc. Uh, the Dutch version, probably it would have been too much trouble to actually localize them because the Dutch version of Sesame Street uh, probably also for the English version I can kind of imagine but it's so different from the American version that it probably didn't make any sense to actually localize them but what is interesting is uh, Jim Henson unfortunately died uh, but uh, these games came out after his death and I think this is these contained some of his last recordings that he actually did before his death uh, as Kermit and Ernie and uh, who else did he voice? Did he voice Elmo? I'm, I'm, I forgot. Uh, so in that sense it kind of has a you know historical significance. Uh, these games were later released on PC I think and it got a couple of more editions um, but 
um, I only ever tried this one. What I know is that this this is a fantastic game or title for kids. Uh, of course, we are not kids, but we can still check it out. Uh, but yeah, still to this day, this this is just a fun title to um, uh, to have them play through and just enjoy some time with the uh, the Sesame Street gang, who are you know kind of timeless. Uh, but yeah, in, in, in the Netherlands, we just had, uh, different puppets. Uh, of course, we also had the same ones with, uh, the big bird being in the room, uh, which was different in every, uh, location, uh, being big bird. Ours was called, uh, Pino and he was blue. Um, but also... Arguably, our main characters were uh, called Tommy and Ini Mini, uh, and a whole bunch of uh, human actors. And Tommy was a... I don't know what Tommy was. A dog, maybe? He always went, Pooey, Pooey! <laughs> Sesame Street! <laughs> oh, hi. Welcome to Grouch Street. Uh, I mean Sesame Street. Go ahead, move your star around, and whenever you see those crummy sparkles, push your button. <laughs> I'm a push my button. Uh, yeah, we did have Oscar, but you know, it was a bit of a minor. Uh, Bert and Ernie, we did have. Um, but yeah, just only, you know, the street itself also looks different because it's just more of a American suburban street kind of thing, I suppose. Uh, and yeah, in the PC version, there is a lot more street. Uh, yeah, I do agree, uh, the part boy. You did, with the roller controller, this is much more authentic. Like, it, it was really intended for this uh, kind of uh, thing. And yeah, it's, it's basic kid hey. stuff. That's my Saturday Where? and Sunday. I'm saving it for dessert. <laughs> I'm only standing on it. That's kind of funny because I didn't click on it. Because if you click on it, you uh, just get, you know, st stuff happens and kids get to, you know, pick things up. And it's kind of cool, kind of neat. Um, and you can go places. Uh, and yeah, so, this... you're going to go visit Big Bird. <laughs> Have a grouchy time if you can. This was just so much fun for kids and you uh, could just explore things and play some games with your favorite characters, you know, and this Hi. was... Hi! I was hoping you'd come to see me. What do you want to do first? This was actually a title that really tried to just go all out and just offer so many different activities and things to, to do uh, at that time. I mean, you know, with today's compared to today, it's not as much, but... Back then it was a lot. Uh, so you know, you can click again. I think each room has a story. Oh boy, little red riding bird. I mean, it's kind of funny that Big Bird is now the little <laughs> red riding bird. <laughs> to turn the pages, move your star over to the okay. corner of the page. Okay, okay, Mr. Big Bird. I know how to turn a freaking page, okay? Once Here. upon a time, there was a bird who always wore a red cape, so everyone called him Little Red Riding Bird. One day, Little Red Riding Bird merrily skipped through the forest. I can't wait to give Grandma Bird this delicious basket full of goodies, Little Red Riding Bird said. Little Red Riding Bird was very careful to avoid wicked wolves, tricky foxes, and other ill-behaved creatures. Little did he know that the trickiest creature of all awaited him at Grandmother Bird's house. 
kind of a shame that the music just cuts out all of a sudden and doesn't automatically progress as I suppose uh, don't tell me that uh, that the wolf guy ate granny bird when little red riding bird got to grandma bird's house he was surprised to find grandma in bed wearing her bonnet with the blankets and sheets pulled up close to her chin why granny little red riding bird said, what grouchy eyes you have all the better to stare at you with my dear granny said and granny what funny eyebrows you have little red riding bird said all the better to frown and make funny faces with my dear and granny what a grumpy voice you have little red riding bird said all the better to argue and complain with my dear and besides what's wrong with my voice very important very important Before little red riding bird could answer the grouch who had been pretending he was granny bird all along leapt up and grabbed little red riding bird's basket of goodies then just as suddenly the real granny bird appeared she had been outside picking bird berries the whole time the Grouch and Grandma Bird both grabbed the basket of goodies as Little Red Riding Bird looked on. Those goodies are mine! The Grouch said, Who would get the basket of goodies? Finally, with one big tug, the Grouch pulled the basket away from Grandma. In a flash, the Grouch threw open the basket. He was shocked to find chocolate cookies gingerbread cake a whole bag full of strawberries and in fact every wonderful sweet tasty treat a grandma could ever want yuck it's just a bunch of icky sweet stuff the grouch said in disgust get that stuff away from me or i'm gonna be sick and in a second he was gone kind of curious what his plan was huh <laughs> Stealing the treats, not liking the treats. What were you expecting? But yeah, it's kind of cool that they have these. Um... Little Red Riding Bird sniffed, and with the grouch gone, Little Red Riding Bird sat down with Granny Bird, and they had a wonderful lunch. Like it's kind of interesting that they have these stories here. The end. Yeah, that that was really needed. Um. And it actually lasts way longer than I thought. And I think every section has a one of those storybooks. Um, and yeah, uh, they they do take kind of kind of long. And yeah, there's uh, I think, yep. It's like a radio thing, but this is the insane part. There is so much on these radios. It's like. It's like they have hours of, of content and oh boy no 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 let's not have the Elmo <laughs> like under each button there's also different stuff and each one takes so long and I'm not sure if this stuff is um, like from the show from the American show I don't know uh, probably that it's recorded from that but there is so much on that radio it's crazy uh, and yeah the same thing is also the fact with the TV only this time it's like uh, little scenes um, and again you can keep clicking on this and you get different scenes. And I'm again not sure if these are actually from the show. Uh, now to the letter F. It's quite possible these look because like very old fragments. The letter F will be featured. Fragments. This is my fantastic flea circus. 
featuring the fabulous Flea family, Freddie, Fats, Fanny, Filbert, and Floyd Flea. Floyd has the flu. Flu? Mm -hmm. So Fats will fill in for Floyd. Fine. But make it fast, because Fats has a 5 o'clock flight to Finland. Let's feature Fats first on the format, then. Fire away, Fats! First, I fly the flag. Yeah, just, just so cool. And, like, look at how many different right. scenes there are. And again, now we have gone round, but if you pl click on the green button, you get totally different scenes. And under the blue button, there are different scenes still. It is nuts how much content is in this game, in this, you know, unassuming kids game. There is this, <laughs> the game does says F, doesn't it? <laughs> it's just, I don't know, this is really, really for... You know, one of these interactive kids experiences really full with content. They didn't have to go this hard, but they went and, you know, kind of needed with such a license. Uh, but yeah, I'm not sure if those are actually scenes from the show. Uh, in the Netherlands, we didn't have that many of those animated scenes. Uh, so I'm not sure. And yeah, everything is based on letters in this one. And you can call s s uh, people here on the phone. Who should we call? Who do you want to call? Ernie and Bert? Or Snuffy? Or Oscar? Snuffy is his name. Uh, yeah, I think uh, he's in uh, also a part of this game. We didn't have a lot of Snuffy when as his name. When you decide who to call, just move your star and press the button. I didn't like Snuffy as much. And I think it had to do with... Uh, you know, he was big, and the lips kind of look scary, and I don't know. <laughs> let's uh, let's call good old Oscar. He should always be in for a nice talk, isn't he? Hi, this is Oscar the Grouch. I'm not in right now, and neither is Slimy. But you can leave a message after the splat, and maybe we'll call you back. Bye. Figures. <laughs> and I suppose we can talk to Big Bird here. Hooray! It's time to play What's My Rhyme? Here's a rhyme I really like. Don't we make a silly pair, a great big bird, and a tiny... Uh, oh boy! Uh, umbrella? Umbrella? Don't we make a silly <laughs> I like, bear? I like the little suppressed inflection he has there. Umbrella? That <laughs> sounds funny. Try again. Can you move your star to something that rhymes with pear? Oh, well, sure. Bear. You did it. You made a rhyme. Don't we make a silly pair, a great big bird, and a tiny bear? I am I awesome. I love making <laughs> rhymes, don't you? Come back and play again. Anytime. Thank you very much for joining us, Daniel, and uh, have a good night. Hey there, Omegala. <clears throat> wow, uh, Omegala. Uh, I'm sorry. Am I saying that correctly? Uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's see what else do we have. Um... Gee, that was so much fun. Let's play again soon. See you later. Oh my golfa! Now I'm seeing it. Yeah, my uh, sorry, I'm. Yeah, thank you, Omega Alpha. Nice to see you uh, my text-to-speech thing it doesn't do uh, always make very uh, very clear what the names are actually called from people. Um... So sometimes I mess up. Sorry about that. Uh, so here is uh, Snuffy's place. I think. A up yep. Over a grouch. Well, I hope you have a good time. And uh, yeah, for everyone who is uh, interested in CDI, Omega Alpha is actually very knowledgeable on CDI oh, and um, actually you. has I probably a more extensive collection me. than I do. Um. So, 
so do follow him as well uh, to learn more about it uh, and yeah just I seem to remember that the TVs and the radios in each section show the same scenes. Let's see. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah, my, my CDI collection is kinda, kinda, yeah, but this thing you know, was a puppet too, but it was giant. It was like uh, as big as Big Bird, but it had this snout that was moving and I never liked it as a uh, as a kid, uh, and it has the, the the eyelashes and such. It, it's just I don't know. It was it was unsettling. <laughs> we didn't have it much as uh, hey actually the phone. I did not know that could happen. Uh, we didn't have him as uh, as much in the Dutch version. Hello, it's me, Big Bird. I was wondering what you like better, the television or the radio. I like them both. What about you? Ask Snuffy which he likes better, okay? Thanks. Bye bye. So you give us a question to choose one, but you like both. You big hypocrite. <laughs> Golly, you wanna play Snuffy Says? <laughs> Here goes. YouTube is the best. Snuffy Says. Move your star to something that starts with the letter B. Uh, with, with the B? I'm sorry, I was not... What does start with a B? That's nuts, that's... Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did he say B? Glasses? Is it a ball hat? Hat? No. Hat starts with the letter H. I know! Oh cool, they actually display it too. Something that starts with the letter B. Ah, book, of course, Ben. Thanks. <laughs> book. Gosh, it's kind of kind of crazy right. because you think uh book like my brain works like the book is like the the interactive uh, storybook, so that's not an object you can actually <laughs> interact with now, but of course you can. Play again later. But yeah, let's uh, let's not stay around with him before he eats us. Come back to my cave soon. <laughs> Bye. Again, you know, this is just it's 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 so silly, but for a kids game, this is just so cool. I wonder if Snuffy is Kingdom the Far Reaches is uh, kind of interesting. Uh, it also has a sequel on CDI. Do you have that one? Have you have you seen that one? Um, but yeah, especially when you go more recent, CDI games tend to be very, very difficult to find. And I have some well, of those more rarer games. When you come back. Um, but there is a lot of games that I still don't have. Because uh, there's also a lot of region specific games. Uh, from France, hey, from Italy, uh, oh, from England. From, <laughs> from the US and... Uh... Also from Japan, even there's some exclusives. And uh, yeah, here we are at uh, Bird and Ernie. Always felt a bit sorry for Bird having to deal with Ernie all day long. <laughs> yeah, I've never, I've never uh, had a um, BBC Micro. Wow. <laughs> yep, they actually have different ones. What? <laughs> anyway, what uh, what does uh, what does Bert have to say here? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Want to listen to the radio with me? Nah, we already listened to the radio, Bert. You have anything else now to listen. say? This is my advice. Don't put all your paper clips in one basket. 
I mean, yeah, uh, might as well spread them around, get them lost all over the place, why not? It's got Ernie to say here. Hey Bert, it's time to play my Shape-O-Matic game. Shape-O-Matic? What do you mean, Ernie? You can change the shape. Yeah, Omega will. Uh, Omega also. Thank you. Uh, the world of CDI. That was the name I was looking for. Sorry about that. Awesome website. Really good reference for uh, quite a ton of CDI games I have never heard of. Um, so you know, if you want to dive into that, check that out. And have a good night, man. Thanks for joining us. Uh, but yeah, we are doing the uh, morphometic. What? What? What do you say? It's a square. We turned the fishy into a square. It's, uh, this, uh... <laughs> Hello, little fishies. Do you like your new fish tank? <laughs> it's a triangle. Ernie, you're such an asshole sometimes. It's shaped like a circle. I think those do actually exist, huh? The, the, the globe ones. It's shaped like a square. Your bottle cap collection never looked like that. Oh yeah, what about the tuba? It's a square. Uh, probably someone made it work, a triangle fish tank. I wonder how to play that tuba. It's shaped like a triangle. I mean, it's just... It's shaped like a square. <laughs> I like how it also uh, makes the things that are in it actually the shape. I could never paint a picture like that. I mean, that doesn't it's look half bad. Uh, it looks kind of okay. <laughs> it's shaped like a circle. I could never paint a picture like that. Okay. Uh... What uh, do we dare? Gee, Bert, I always <laughs> knew you were a real square. I, I feel like Bert in the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm Bert in the box. Now it looks like now it looks like a Dorito. Get the point. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh Hey Bert, you really get around, don't you? I feel like I'm going in circles, Ernie. <laughs> this this probably shouldn't be as funny as this. How about Ernie? Oh my Hey Bert, what watch the? me do a square dance. Oh very funny, Ernie. <laughs> Why didn't his legs uh, uh go on? I, I guess that's not an interactive element. That's it. Now it looks really weird. Ernie, you're a triangle. You look like a slice of pizza. With or without anchovies, Bert? With or without anchovies? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> that, that wasn't even a joke. Look, Ernie, you're a circle. Gee, Bert, now I'm a big I, I don't know. I, I'm easily <laughs> amused. What can I say? <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, this this stuff is just for kids. This is just awesome. You'll never be able to wear that shirt. It's shaped like a square. Even for grown-ups, I love it. Uh, just just fun stuff. Let's just. Uh, oh wait, I. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm not just going to quit out of it. Oh wait, what the exit sign? Oh, you're ready to stop playing? Well. We can play Shapeomatic anytime you want. And everything is back to normal. Uh, because oh, you're leaving? Don't I you seem to remember. Pigeons with me? Bert, Bert, you're such an exciting guy. Bye <laughs> <laughs> bye. Goodbye. Burn, Annie. Always such an asshole to Bert, huh? Anyway, uh, I seem to remember if Boy, we hit the exit sure button. There's a lot of neat stuff in Ernie and Bert's room. Maybe you should go back later and help them mess it up a little. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. Always, uh, always the clever one there. Uh, but yeah, I seem to remember there being a bit of a odd 
choice for ending sequence. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Hey, push the button if you want to stop playing. I kind of love that. I never knew that, but he actually is contact sensitive. Wherever you stand on, he reacts on uh, when you don't do anything. That's kind of cool. Uh, but yeah, I, I let's listen to this music. I seem to remember it's kind of demonic. Stopping so soon? Well, come back again. We've got a lot more Grouch games to play and rotten stories to tell. <laughs> I mean, sounds just like you remember it, doesn't it? <laughs> Holy cow, whoever came up with that one? I mean... It'll stop kids from hitting the exit button, that's for sure. Like, it doesn't sound nice at all. Um, but yeah. Wow. But yeah, really cool kids games. Uh, I love these. Uh, can I actually open the thing? Yeah, there we go. And there is another one, but uh, we're not... Uh, let's, let's, we've, we've seen enough of these things, haven't we? Let's actually play a game. I feel like playing a bit of a game. And uh, you know this this one's going to no doubt be requested quite a ton anyway. I, I'm not going to play through the whole thing, but uh, let's just play some uh, Hotel Mario. I haven't played this in ages. Um, but it is actually a really, really cool game. Apart from the cutscenes, which are hilarious. This one that's uh, actually a, a, a manual, um, but as I remember it, this one came out in 1994, so, you know, a lot later in the CDI's life. But it's actually a cool game. I don't, uh, I don't hate this one. I actually like it. Anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's get pooping. If it loads, there we go. <laughs> nice of the princess to invite us over for a picnic, eh, Luigi? I hope she made lots of spaghetti. Luigi, look! It's from Bowser. Dear pesky plumbers, the Koopalings and I have taken over the Mushroom Kingdom. The princess is now a permanent guest at one of my seven Koopa hotels. I dare you to find her if you can't. We gotta find the princess. And you gotta help us. If you need instructions on how to get through the hotels, check out the enclosed instruction book. Oh, great. I saw someone actually made a uh, artificial intelligence guided animation of it where they added frames and it looked it looked not nice. <laughs> uh, these animations are meant to look nice. Uh, but yet, yeah, adding frames makes some really, really ugly, ugly um, extra frames, which is just weird. Hey there, CDI Arcade. Great to have you along. Uh, and yeah, let's see how much of an embarrassment I can uh, make myself out to be Looks this time. Peaceful looks are deceiving when Koopas are involved. Again, I, I do love this game, but I haven't played this one in years. Uh, little known fact is that this game... Uh, I'm not sure if it was inspired by... Um, there was a prototype for... 
a Atari 2600 game, uh, and I, I think uh, Looney Hotel or something, but it had uh, it had uh, Bugs Bunny. Ah, oh, crap! I already messed up. It had Bugs Bunny go through a similar situation as Mario here. Uh, it, it it has such similar gameplay where you got to wonder, like, did they get inspired by that prototype, or was it just coincidence? Um, By the way, sometimes the doors have power-ups in them. Uh, I I don't remember which one exactly anymore. But we can check it out. That one does not. And the object of the game is quite simple. Just open all the doors. And that one had a coin in it. Cool. Uh, you also want to be careful with the signs of the screen. Because uh, the signs actually... Um, also make you die because you fall off the hotel don't you know um, but yeah it's it's very playable game this uh, on CDI uh, you do need a rec controller I used to play this with the remote uh, don't recommend it <laughs> it's a bit too stiff for that and uh, but with the controller it's very playable and um, you know this game gets a lot of flag but I actually really enjoy it um, and even as kind of a Mario kind of game, it does feature a lot of elements from Mario. Yeah, playing it with the Peacekeeper is... What did I pick up? I, that was a kind of accident, but a happy little accident as they say. Uh, playing this with the Peacekeeper would be awesome. <laughs> Probably uh, someone will at some point devote a speedrun on that. Because why not? Uh, and probably there's a power-up in those top doors because, you know, you need to get out of your way to actually get there. There's also warps in this game. Uh, some doors that are closed, you can open, you go in and you enter a warp room to a different section of the game. Or something might happen that will change the level somewhat. Um, you know, an example like that is in the second level where the lights keep going out. And... Then you, uh, the game will stay on, uh, or the lights stay on. Um, the Pirate Game Boy, if I still hate the soccer games, I, I would need to check them out again. I will be honest, that was a bit of a rush review I did of those games. Um, and that basically has to do with kind of me not liking soccer in general. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was kind of more of a me trying to be funny. Um, but yeah, I could have. I didn't really give them a proper review, as it were. So I don't know. Uh, maybe if I trade them again and give them some more serious thought, uh, then then I would enjoy them more because I seem. You know, looking back at some of my older videos, um, I do kind of notice how negative I was towards CDI at times, which I'm kind of sorry about in, in retrospect. Uh, because I set out, you know, to give more of a positive vibe to the CDI, uh, but it definitely didn't always come across. Blech. Which, uh, you know, it's the old... Uh, Angry video game nerd. Kinda. There we go. Kind of influence, I suppose. Which, uh, you know, it's very uh, involuntary. But it did happen, I suppose. And yeah, I'm not sure if I'm wiser. I am older, that's for sure. <laughs> Let's see if there's anything in this door. There we go. Yeah, I doubt it, yes. Shelly's uh, road, I remember being a real pain in the ass. That was such a pain. <laughs> and, uh, um, yeah, some CDI games are 
definitely just rough and, and just not really thought out very well. You know, some of these developers weren't really interested in gamers. That is an extra life which uh, quickly made his way off. Uh, and yeah, this is, uh, you know, they even got the fire flower in. That's pretty cool. Uh, and you fire a fireball with buttons one and two together. Uh, which is another reason why you really want a uh, joystick for this, or a joypad. Nothing there. Yeah, for those wondering, uh, if you leave an enemy on the screen, they will open the doors again. It's a big nuisance. And I think uh, 30 coins is, extra, is an extra life. Uh, and I think we just got one. Let's see how we, uh, how far we can actually get, which mm, is probably not very far because this game can get very tough very quickly. And I have no clue where the warps are anymore. There's also a code I know, uh, not I, I don't know the code. I just know that there is a code. I would need to look it up, uh, but it allows you to skip to any of the levels, which is pretty cool. Uh, and. Yeah, the, the last couple of levels are really tough. Uh, I think those rainbow coast coins are 5 or are they 10? Uh, yeah, I don't dare pick that up. And now we have the, uh, what's his name? Wiggler? Wiggler, right? And you kill him by... Oh no, extra life! And it's gone. Uh, can I actually... Probably should wait. You kill him by killing his segments and you have to start at the back, as I remember. Oh boy, and he comes back already. Great. You know what, I'm going to leave you for last. Because uh, he also comes back, which is quite annoying. So it's kind of a good practice to leave him for last anyway. Uh, I think other enemies also come back eventually, but especially... Ah, crap. I thought I could sneak in there. Uh, yeah, I guess it does have more powers than Mario 2. That's kind of crazy. I never thought about that, but that's, that's totally true. There's only the mushroom. And the star. Yeah, that's true, they never released the Donkey Kong game, but they also had the license for that, apparently. Um, there was... Uh, there were two other Mario games actually planned for the CDI. Uh, and kind of in development. There was, uh... uh of course, uh, Wacky, Wacky Worlds, or whatever the hell uh, that game was called. And there was, uh... Oh, crap. You boss it. Do you need to... Yeah, I... No, I thought I jumped on his back. Uh, there was also Mario Odyssey, I think. Or... Mar I don't remember exactly. It was Mario Takes America or some stupid... <laughs> um, name like that. It, and it was based... It was kind of intended as a educational title. Ooh, I want the... Uh, I want the... Mushroom here, which is basically a free hit. I have not played Super Mario Odyssey. I do not have a Switch. I don't have any of the uh, modern consoles, to be honest. Uh, let's just wait for this guy. Oh, uh, and you're already on his way back, huh? It is one of the Switch games that I am kind of interested in. Like, okay, that that looks cool. Uh, Odyssey. But I don't know. Uh, just not too much into modern gaming in general. Let's see if we can actually kill him this time. No, you can't kill them at all, huh? 
Or is it still on the front? Yeah, it is the front. Okay, I messed up. It is the front. Which is the same in Super Mario World, isn't it? <laughs> ah, it goes for Dino. As I said, I haven't played this game in quite a while. Yeah, they turn red, huh? Still, kind of, kind of like it that they added it. They didn't need to. Uh, let's uh, wait here because. Oh crap! No! Uh, I don't think... Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't think uh, the CDI would handle Super Mario Bros. 3 well. Uh, just too much had going on. Like, this is... This is already asking quite a lot for the CDI's processing power. Or, well, it's not the processing, actually. The processor is actually quite capable. It's more the video memory and... Uh, Super Mario Bros. 3 does have a lot of scrolling and I think that would make it very difficult. You either have like a big screen where there's basically a background. Okay, but now we have to wait. Or if you want more action-oriented stuff, you really need to stick to one screen, really. Take for example... And there we go, bloody wigglers. But yeah, it's the video memory that the CDI really suffers from uh, having, having a big lack of. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, the wigglers really return quite fast, which is quite annoying, especially if there's multiple, like uh, in this level here. Get rid of him. Oh, let's not mess up here. And the bloody boss it already came back. Okay, new plan. We will leave one with just one segment so we can just stomp him as we come back. Yes, it's, uh, it's also kind of a puzzle game, I suppose. And I... Nope, can't get that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it's a real shame because the console itself uses a Motorola 6800... Uh, uh, thousand. Why did I do that? Processor, which is quite capable. I mean, that's in an Atari ST, I think. Uh, which is, uh, you know, it can, can handle quite a bit of processing. But yeah, then there is basically no video memory at all. I'm out of cherry beer. Oh well, sad sap. Yeah, it's just ridiculous why they even put in such a high processing uh, power CPU in a system that really can't make good use of it. I really didn't time that one well. Let's go back. Actually close the door. Sometimes I tend to be a bit too quick and then... You don't actually close stuff. Uh, and I suppose we should... Get him down to one segment. And just leave him be for now. And leave him for last. I mean, and just for the concept of the game, it just works so well, you know, it's 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 a fun platformer, uh, action platformer, and yeah, you can argue like, is it uh, is it really like Mario? But you know, does it really have to be? I don't like that. Uh... 
Yeah, a, a Commodore a CD, uh, that would be cool. I do have a Amiga 32, uh, which is also quite nice. But uh, Commodore TV would actually be cool. Uh, there is a really cool Defender of the Crown uh, version of that uh, on that system, which I would love to try out. Ah, damn it! <laughs> And of course I can't make it through there, can I? Nope. Ah, man. Already stuck, huh? Yeah, that looks like a really cool version of that game. Last week uh, we played it on the CDI and uh, that was uh, kind of neat. But uh, yeah, it turned out being really easy. Um... Well, not as easy as I remembered it, but, uh, or, well, I mean, easier than I actually remembered it, because <laughs> I remember being uh, quite stuck in that game for a while. But the NES version totally kicked my ass. Wait. There was a secret store in there. That is awesome. Okay, let's uh, let's try to not waste it. Okay, so can we keep it? Can we? Ah, yeah. Okay. And a faucet. Okay, but now we know there is a store there, so uh, this should now be easy. I did not know that. That was a bit of a mistake of my part to actually <laughs> hit up there. Wait to go, Seb. Button 1 and button 2. Different buttons. Imagine that. <laughs> uh, button 2 does close the door, so there is a function to it. And that mushroom is just uh, really hard to get, huh? I think there is a way to actually lure that out there, but uh, eh, whatever. We don't need it. So in here, yep. Now we go over here. Hopefully we are in time, in time. Ah, crap. <laughs> oh my god. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, but, you know, let's just lure that dude a bit out more further. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is quite embar Quite embarrassing, isn't it? As per usual, you know, now I'm actually playing a game, so of course I, uh, I, 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 I fail at it. Um, I did beat it at some point, but uh, yeah, it took me some, uh, some practicing, that's for sure. Okay, uh, should I go with it again? Well, we can... Did I leave the door open? I did leave the door open. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's just wait here because he's coming out. <laughs> he's not coming out. <laughs> ah, this is just... A <laughs> ah, this is just a one disaster after the other, isn't it? But uh, maybe we can... Maybe we can... Salvage this. Maybe we can just about make it. Get in there, get in there. Mm, there we go. Finally. Good grief. <laughs> uh, does each stage have eight stages? Uh, no, there's ten stages per world. Of course, there's two of more, uh, two more of those freaking wigglers. 
Because why not? Is there anything in here? Nah, I'm not gonna... Oh yeah, you can actually duck too, huh? Uh, that door at the top. But that door at the top looks mighty suspicious, doesn't it? Let's check it out. Gotta be something in there, right? Sweet start. That's, uh, that's really what we need. Close these doors. Quickly get down there. Of course, the other one is coming again. Yeah, it's kind of neat the, the the background coloring. Ooh, I was afraid I was getting the hitting the gum uh, the goomba there, but no, we're safe. Yeah, the backgrounds are really nice. I think these are just like the uh, Zelda games. These were actually hand painted, I believe. Uh, which is pretty cool. So there's probably some high resolution version of these floating about somewhere. Uh, which would really be cool. Ah, three of the bastards, huh? Well, at least there's this. Uh, let's not deal with him yet. Uh, let's actually have <laughs> get hide in here. Yeah, probably in some world. It's uh, it's a shame. Oh no! Where did you come from? Oh yeah, that's also a problem. That if all the doors are opened, you also lose. So let's try to do a bit better here. Hmm? Might as well get rid of him for the one second that it lasts. I hoped we could just barely make it, but nope. Let's uh, first close the doors up here. <laughs> yeah, those damn bots. Oh well, seems to be gone now. And you know, sometimes misspellings are used intentionally by. Um... No! Push too soon. You know, because that actually triggers engagement. Kind of a cheap trick, but. It happened. It, it works, I suppose. Very unfortunately. Did you need something in there? Nope. Uh, let's not open it. Let's wait. Uh, we don't have a lot of time here. Let's wait a bit before... Yeah. Oh no, again! Bloody thing! <laughs> Same thing as before. I hope there is a star here because uh, so far I've been uh, needing a star to actually get rid of these uh, dudes. Let's actually uh, do this instead here. Just go to reverse order I suppose. Star in here? Nope. But we're kind of in good shape now. Star in here? Nope. Star in here? Nope. Uh, I didn't actually. Yep, there we go. Star in here? Nope. No stars, huh? Bit of a problem here. Star in here? Nope. <laughs> there is no star. This. Oh, Miss Jump Dead. This is going to be a problem here. Star in here? No. Okay. Uh. Let's think. Which would be the most 
efficient to actually... How? Oh, well, I guess I jumped on his back. How do you beat those three in quick succession so that you have enough time to actually close all of the doors? I don't actually know. But you know, we've got this down. We know there is no stars, so let's just rush through this part. go I do like that you know there's kind of a pattern to this uh, uh, this game which you know if you learn it you can kind of figure out how to do it uh, each time in that sense it's kind of a puzzle game as well and I do like it in that regard uh, actually uh, again Fool me once. Shame on me. Fool me 5,000 times. Even more shame on me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to be in time, am I? Nope. There is he again. Uh, let's wait here. Yeah, how am I going to deal with three of these bastards? Yeah, I, I... Oh, and I can't actually... Uh... Yeah, this is taking way too long. How do I get enough time? Can you actually, um... Like bounce on his head and then bounce on the next segment. I don't remember. Now uh, let's go up. I think what we want to do is uh, let's test this. I suppose. No, nope, don't do that. <laughs> you have to wait until the wiggler's head is on. He's just chilling on his back again. I don't think he's in the frame, is he? And now he's slightly complaining. And there was a mushroom in there we should pick up. Yeah. Yeah, fire flower really come in handy here. Okay. I think you just have to be very fast with the last three... rivers. Always, Ben, always, you know, the birds wait until the coast is clear, then they will show up. They're spying on you, man. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thank you for cleaning them up as you can. Uh, you know, and there's no preventing... There's no full prevention against bots, is there? So we'll just have to live with them. Duh! You again. Let's actually wait for the timing a bit. Okay. Kill you. Kill you. Okay. And run like the wind. And of course, you, how do you, how are you ever going to be fast enough for that? It's crazy. And of course, this boss comes along as well. Uh, I think we're just not going to bother with these guys and leave them as is. And just close the doors. I think that's uh, that's the key here. 
Yeah, it's almost like I never played the game before, huh? <laughs> so, uh, let's cut them down like before. But as I said, it's like... Uh, remember that one video I made? Uh, kind of like a... Announcement video when I went with uh, Luck to Bacillus Prime to some convention. Uh, this is the last time I actually inserted Hotel Mario into a CDI, so <laughs> it's like what, five years ago? Six? No, more even. I think it was 2013 or something. Oh crap. Wigglers are freaking annoying in this game. Well, in any game, uh, mostly, I think. But uh, especially in this one, it's just... Mm. Look at him, opening the doors and all. Bastard. Yeah, let's just leave him alone. And... Just hope. Let's just hope... I don't run into a... Trinket Koopa! Didn't have that one yet. <laughs> oh wait, we did. Because he keeps walking out of the door. They bust him open with the head. You know how, uh, how angry they can get. So, you know, if there's a door in front of them. No problem. Because it won't be there for long. What were Wigglers uh, like in the uh, Super Mario RPG game? I forgot. Were they a pain in that one as well? I don't remember it. It's also kind of um, annoying. Your jump actually goes through the floor. So, you know, if there's something above you, you can bump your head onto it. So it's quite hard uh, and easy to forget. You know, you're so... Focused on um, actually avoiding the enemies on your level, that you kind of forget that you also have to watch the level above you. Oh my goodness! Are you? Were <clears throat> there mini boss in 64? I don't. I, I don't even remember him being in 64. Oh my goodness, uh, oh crap. Gotta be quick. <laughs> I did play, um, uh, this is not well. Oh, the tiny island. Yeah, oh man, I remember that one where you have to uh, change sizes all the time. And then slide off the side. And die. <laughs> yeah, Super Mario RPG is, is a really fun game to play, actually. It still really holds up, um, uh, I think, at least. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, only played it through emulation, of course, because uh, that one also didn't come out here. Uh, so, you know, it can be quite expensive to find here. Did I... Did I hit him? I did not intend to get it there. Obviously, but... Not sure if I even agree with that hit. Man, this, this stage is annoying. <laughs> Fire flower would be so handy. Wait, stuff does fly out again. Hmm. Yeah, coin keeps popping out, doesn't it? But here, nothing. How about this one? Can you just collect life like this? Uh, I guess you can. <laughs> Interesting. That bottom door did have a mushroom, I wonder. Did that mushroom come back? Because that would be handy. Let's 
let's uh, let's find out. Because if that's the case, that will be super handy. Oh man, this uh, this pattern is not very ideal, is it? Nope. We're all out of mushrooms here. Yeah, this is not working. <laughs> It's such a hard time here. Give me another! No. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Yeah, also, did you ever uh, complete this on stream? Because I think you do have it. Yeah, Fire Flower makes such a big difference. Alright, uh, Pirate Gaming Boy, thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, the second level is the brick level where the lights uh, um, go out. Ah, crap. And what came behind that? There was a icy level, there is a cave level. Uh, there is a cloud level. The final level is uh, is like a lava level in a Bowser Hotel. It's a real pain in the ass. I also remember uh, the boss fight with Bowser is extremely difficult. Yeah, not enough time here. Man, those wigglers! <laughs> I'm thinking maybe I should go back and just save a fire flower, but uh, then again, then we need to go all the way through those levels, assuming that I can even save the fire flower for this long. Uh, which, uh, yeah, probably not. <laughs> I think, I still think the best way is. To well, I don't know if the best way, but just get lucky. As you rush down and hope that the wigglers leave the freaking doors alone as they move past it. Because it seems like kind of random, sometimes they open it, sometimes they don't. No, they seem to always open the bloody things, of course. Or maybe you need a specific pattern. Let's just leave him be for now. Uh, that I, that was not in my intention. That was a bit of a shame. Let's. I did not want to do that. Hey there, be Olivier. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, there's also a bit of an issue because I have a... Uh, my setup is Paul, so... Uh, but streaming does not allow for actually 50 frames per second. So there's a bit of a... There's a couple of lost frames as it's actually converted to 60 frames. Again, not enough time. Man! Let's just, uh... How to do this? How to do this? And my CDI does not have a RGB mod, so it's just a uh, standard composite, which is not the most pretty thing. Can't even get out of the freaking first hotel. 
<laughs> I remember usually I had the most trouble in, uh, I think the, um, uh, what's the cave or the icy one? Probably the icy one because ice physics. <laughs> but I actually think the cave one is the first one. Uh, and I seem to remember the third one being the one that actually gave me the most trouble. Yeah, but toasters do toast toast, so... Yeah. Can you ever have too much, too many toasters? Yes, you can never have too much toast, I suppose. <laughs> Man, they really plug this whole game to parts, you know, to make the YouTube poops. <laughs> Same with, uh, with the Zelda games. No, he's going to... Yeah, that's not good. Let's go here. Can we make it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Look how fast they are opening the freaking doors. This is so annoying. I don't agree with that hit. I don't agree at all. Uh, get out of the freaking elevator, Mario. And yeah, if I was a bit faster there, maybe. Maybe. Man! Look how fast they are! I don't remember having this much trouble at all. Actually, I, I, I seem to remember that there were uh, Wigglers on like two levels, but with one empty level in between. Yeah. One at the bottom. Oh, I actually like that idea, uh, uh, B. Olivier. Uh, a Mario vs. Donkey Kong game like the ones on the Game Boy. That would actually kind of work, I think. Because those are also kind of slower paced. Kind of like that idea. Someone, uh, someone should really get onto it. It's kind of cool to see that uh, CDI homebrewing is kind of living up. Uh, I think there's actually some guys working on some tools to make it easier to program for the system because it is a real challenge to make anything work on CDI because you have to basically program on the hardware level to make anything happen. It's quite annoying. Close the door. Can you guys please stop opening the frigging doors? I know it's your task, but my goodness. Uh, no! <laughs> I want to beat this level. I would just want to beat this one hotel, you know. <laughs> and I will at some point. Yeah, I really think I must have in the past just used the uh, fire flower. Yeah, Nobelia, for example, is, uh, is a real cool example. Um, but yeah, as I said, that there are some tools being made to actually make it easier for further games. And I think uh, the designer of Nobilia actually also uh, helped in that. To actually make that. You know, it will be cool to see more games. Just because Nobelia is another game where it's, it's you know, it's, it's a single screen game. And for that, CDI does work fairly well. I do not agree with that hit. <laughs> I was too greedy. You can... <laughs> that, that hit did not count, I say. Uh, maybe we should uh, play Nobelia next week, huh? Just go through that. Uh, it's not a very long game. Which is the one downside of it. 
Um, well, and the slowdown, I suppose. Still kind of nice to have an actual game on the system. And Bomberman is always great. This, uh, so far we've got it down, but now the bottom three. Ah man, a bit too slow there. Uh, nope, it's not going to be good. Uh, oh, yeah, as long as you don't exit the elevator, they actually wait, that's nice. Okay. Uh, should I? Ugh, almost ran into the top one. That's bad. But yeah, he that other one opened the one at the far end. Man. And of course, they've opened it all again. Great. Yeah, now taking care of this guy will take too long. Man, I really don't really know. I don't have a real tactic for this one. This is... Uh, <laughs> quite brutal. I must have in the past just used the Fire Flower from the previous level. But I don't remember this being such an obstacle. And maybe, um, maybe I just used the warp back then too, so I never even saw this area. That's also, of course, a possibility. You know, just in the standard Super Mario Brothers, uh, how, how often do you actually see World uh, 3, for example? <laughs> Which sometimes is fun to go through. Um, Well, he's not running the hotel, huh, Ben? He's... Uh, oh, crap. Man. The timing is off again. The Koopalings are uh, running the hotels here. Mario's just rampaging through them. Making a mess of things. Ah, I should have gone out there. <laughs> well, he does no plumbing, I suppose. <laughs> And apparently he has uh, quite the knack for working toasters. Of course, time up. So with something. Man, I have so much trouble in this one. Let's have a fun. Quick play at Hotel Mario, huh, guys? <laughs> Even Griso uh, woke up. Usually a bad sign. It's any minute now that something will drop somewhere. Okay. 
so far we have a down, but then comes the difficult part, huh? And let's wait a bit. And I got hit by jumping a bit too far. It's a shame. <laughs> Bastard. Gotta be quick. Probably not gonna make it again. No, not like this. We are not. Damn it! <laughs> Can't even get one row closed. <laughs> oh man. Uh, time's up. <laughs> I really don't know. Uh, when we hit game over, what we can do is... Uh... Oh, it's already past 11, so... I'm probably going to just take the, take the big L for tonight, <laughs> as per usual. And uh, I, I just need to practice this. Yeah, I already uh, test, tested all these uh, doors. Uh, but these doors, unfortunately, they are all empty. We can, uh, can check them out again to see if one actually holds something, but I think I went in all of them. Uh, and the only one that actually has one is the starting door, which has a mushroom. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's kind of... Because the previous levels where they introduced the Wigglers, they all had, uh, it turned out, a star. But for some reason, this one does not. Well, I mean, clearly to make it a bit different, more difficult, but... Uh... Oh yeah, that's gonna work. Now there's two guys there, okay. <laughs> yep, also nothing here. I did not try and go... I, did, I think I did not try to go actually into the door that had the mushroom. Let's try that. Nah, would have been nice. Would have been too nice. Hey there, Grizzo. Wanna hang out, huh? Sure, maybe maybe it'll bring luck. Would also help if you could quickly kill them, like, you know, uh, hit them in succession, but that also does not seem to be the case. And with a fire flower, they die in one hit. So that really makes a lot of difference. Um, what I might also be able to do is kind of work with the one hit we are granted. But I don't think that will last us long enough to actually do something. Let's 
Yeah, just killing them and, and just being able to jump over them takes too long. And if you forget to actually close the door, that doesn't really help either. Don't you dare! Ah, oh, you bastard! <laughs> yeah, there, there are some Easter eggs with the with the timer of this game, indeed. Which is quite nice, uh, you know, for, for Christmas, when the Christmas date is. Uh, is there a Valentine's one? I don't remember, but I think there's one for Eastern. For Easter. And yeah, Halloween. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a really... It's the first game that I actually know of that has that for the uh, for the holidays. And I already got hit. Damn it! But uh, yeah, we were close indeed. Rizzo might be bringing some luck after all. Who would have thought? <laughs> This is not helping, cat. This is this the, the opposite of bringing luck. <laughs> uh, wrong button. That's true, Ben. Thanks. <laughs> Gotta be quick. Oh, this is, uh, yeah, we're out of time. Oh, oh my shit. As per usual, well, it didn't matter too much. Okay, one more try and then uh, then I'm just gonna call it quits, I suppose, because we're not getting anywhere and <laughs> you guys are probably getting quite tired as well of me just failing over and over again. Do let me know, uh, like next week, I think it would be cool to play some Nobelia and just go through that. That one I can at least beat. I should, right? Uh, but if there's any more uh, games that you would like to see, uh, do let me know. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Awesome. Awesome to have you here and uh, have a good trip home. Thanks. <laughs> That's good to know. Wouldn't that be... Uh, well, I don't know. I I do hope they have some... Uh, add some railings at least to the hotel then. Uh, let's wait. Uh, they are going to eat up a lot of time again, but... You know. These hotels do not really uh, look all too safe, to be honest here. And I should not have done that. I should not have killed him. Oh well. Killed me anyway. At least we get that free hit each time. That's uh, that's a good thing. We 
going over. Wait, where did we get that star from? What? Uh, yeah, it's not much use anymore, is it? No. Mm. But where did we get it from? Just all of a sudden we had a star, that... What? And the timing is up again. Great. This is quite annoying. Uh, so yeah, we got the star somewhere upstairs there. But you, f you also need to take care of the upstairs part, so... What use is it? Ah, damn it. Jumped too early. What use is it really as we get it so early? Uh... Let's see if it will pop up again. Like it was here before, now it's not. Huh. I have no clue where it came from. Seems to, maybe it was instead of that coin that came out of it. It... Was it a coin? Ben? Maybe there is a mechanic that when you have a certain amount of coins that it actually turns into a star? I don't really remember that at all. Could be. I do remember 30 coins is a extra life. Yeah. Or maybe it was kind of a bug, but I kinda doubt that. Okay, this looks kind of promising. Well, it just got ruined by that bottom guy. Oh, man. <laughs> no! <laughs> so close yet so far. Uh, but yeah, let's collect that star or that coin again. Maybe it's just a star hidden like a coin. I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? We're going to figure it out. Mm, yeah, the detection is... It is something you can get used to, uh, uh, Mr. Mario. Nope, now it's just a freaking coin. But yeah, you have to get used to where you can actually hit enemies and those wigglers, because they have a big part, you cannot hit them, um, uh, it, it can be a bit hard to get used to. But the other enemies, they are fairly generous when it comes to the hitbox. And when you have the fire flower, you can just plow through everything. I do not have the fire flower, damn it. <laughs> Should not have demonstrated. Okay. Leave it freaking closed. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> if we just run through, run through. Ah, you bastard! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Uh. <laughs> so close. How many lives left? Last one? I think it's the last one. I would be out of there in no time. Well, probably I wouldn't. Well, giant, huh? Giant. Well, could see that probably. Uh, hiding in the door does help prevent damage or anything. The problem is that the longer you are in the door, uh, the more doors the other enemies will close. And yeah, as soon. Yeah, but there's there's three areas, there's three levels. So yeah, you can maybe manipulate them in how they move. But there's two others that are still going back and forth regardless of that, so you know. Yeah, they, they follow you on the same level, but if they are on a different level, they will just go back and forth. And it seems like they are just opening doors randomly, I think. Uh, you know, we, we can test a bit. And there is also a fairly strict time limit. Guess we're doing one more, one more, huh? <laughs> I'm just so annoyed that I cannot even beat this freaking game or level. Yeah, I heard some. Uh, <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? Heard some big backlash. Uh, although you know, I, I haven't seen too much from the. Why do we have this freaking star and? Yeah, I do not like trials, I think. Too frustrating. But yeah, as I said, you, like you can manipulate them on your level, but... Like, there's, there's more doors we need to close here now. Whoops, should not have done that. And I think what we want to do is just have the doors... Uh, like close to the elevators in a way that we can actually... And now they're out of sync, or yeah, well, I should say in sync again. I think you want to manipulate them in a way where they are... Like in between these doors that are close to the elevators. Like these far ones, those are the issue. Damn it. Damn it. Yeah. Man. 
Like as, as long as you can keep the doors open, like only near the elevators, but you really need to manipulate them in a way. Remember, huh? this is the first, uh, the first area of the game. <laughs> Although, I think nothing, nothing in the second level is nearly as tough. Although, the, the hard part in the second stage or area is that the uh, lights keep going out. Um, but that is kind of easiest to actually deal with. Hey Ben, thank you very much for uh, joining us. It was great to have you along. And uh, have a nice dinner. Uh, quite late for dinner, isn't it? Get out of here, buddy. Like this top one, he's going to screw us over. See? By doing that. By opening the further doors. <laughs> okay, you play with that door. And we're already out of time again. It's no good. Dinner time tends to be a good time, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that's... Yeah, did, uh, did your team win, Ed? Did you guys pull out another win? Why didn't I open that? Hotel Mario certainly is one of the best games. Uh, I just... It, it, it's very playable. Uh, I just suck at this level, that's for sure. I... Just don't remember... This level giving me so much trouble. I, I, I just must have used a lot of warps or something. I don't know. Sorry to hear that, uh, Ed. Uh, maybe, you know, you should actually take care of this guy first as well, because I'm wasting a lot of time here after. And now they're out of sync again. Damn. You bastard! Again, huh? Let's prow through. <laughs> so close. So close. <laughs> oh, man. And if we knew how to actually work that uh, that star at top, that would really make a difference as well, because we kind of sometimes got the star, and then we didn't. So, and I still don't know how it works. Like, here, now we get the star. Why? We did 
we pick up a coin. Fortunately, I'm not fast enough to actually make much use of it because we still need to close all the freaking doors. Like by the time we are at the Wigglers, it's already done. Oh my goodness. Come here, you. Yeah, maybe. Let's hide in there. Stop one, don't. Damn it. And after this one, you have the 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 coupling, and the coupling is also always a bit of a uh, issue. <laughs> ah! Oh well, you opened the door anyway, so eh, wouldn't have made it anyway. Uh, and I think the coupling, they they can actually get you when you are hiding in the doors. I'm not entirely sure if it's all of them. Let's actually, um, let's try something different here. Let's actually do this. See if this does any better. Although this is already costing us a lot of time, but you know, we'll see, we'll see. There is! Uh, oh crap. Yeah, that was the uh, first mistake I actually made. Uh, there is a way to skip this level, uh, although I... The, there is there's a warp zone in one of the previous stages, which we cannot go back to. Uh, so, I think that's also, you know, something that just... Probably something that I used to do. Way to go, Seb. Awesome. Okay, what do we do, Griso? One more try? <laughs> I can't. I can't stand it that I get beaten by this freaking level, man. I know I beat it in the past. We used to play this all the time as kids. And now I can't for some stupid reason. Well, there's three stupid reasons here. <laughs> and already got beat there. Awesome. Uh, let's actually wait for him to go all the way to the right there so we can just move on because those are out of sync. I wanted to try if that coin would be a star because if we picked it up now we would be a lot, you know, we would have more use for it. But oh well, it wasn't to be. It wasn't to be. Uh, and now the bottom one is a bit of a problem here. Uh. <laughs> and that's a bit too quick, Seb. It's not working, Griso. Do your cat magic. No, Mr. Wario, this is not due to the lag. There is some uh, controller lag 
which is basically normal CDI, but uh, you can adjust to it, uh, especially in this game, you know, it's not a fast-paced shooter or anything. Uh, so no, that's not what's tripping me up here, it's just... Partly just bad skills in general. What are you doing, Friso? Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, part just... They're freaking wigglers. They are really difficult. Yeah, Mario does have a crouch. I'm not sure if the crouch is actually used a lot. But I, actually, I don't remember. <laughs> he would love some caterpillar, I'm sure. Okay, let's uh, race for the top one. Probably a mistake, but uh, let's hope. Ah, damn it! <laughs> So close! So close! Oh man! Uh, and yeah, there is a uh, there is a, a a sequence of buttons you can do on the main screen where you can actually uh, select which hotel you want to go to, which is pretty cool. Uh, especially nowadays, since, you know, uh, our CDIs don't tend to save games that well. I don't know, man. Uh, Grizo, uh, Grizo's intestines, they're quite lethal, I think. At least, uh, <laughs> whatever he produces afterwards is quite lethal uh, to the nose. <laughs> So I doubt anything would survive in there. Huh, no star, huh? Go figure. Star? Nah, no star. So again, that, that one in the bottom is the issue now. Because by the time we take him down, Uh, and now they're out of sequence, of course. Uh, Mario's overalls are glowing right now because he has a mushroom, and instead of getting big in this game, it just gives him some fancy pants. <laughs> Almost. You really... I wonder... Um, is it like a pattern that they skip one door and then open another? Or is it truly just random if they... If they... If they just... Eat. Not eat. Um, skip a door or not. I, I wonder if there's any pattern in that. Okay, I'm a bit faster now. This. This might look promising. Because now we have like three stumpy guys. Whoa! Stupid poop ass. 
Did we die uh, to a Goomba yet? Probably we did, huh? <laughs> I mean, you kind of got to appreciate, like, for the limited thing that this game actually is. They did put in a lot of, like, Mario things. And yeah, you can argue, like, not many of the most popular Mario things, but they still... The ah. This is unfortunate, because the top one is going to screw us over again. See? And of course he opened the last freaking door as well. <laughs> is, 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 is the real, is uh, the new Mario movie that bad, huh? I haven't seen much uh, of the promotional stuff, so I don't know. Uh, no, we should probably do what we did last time. Uh, yeah, I, I should probably call it quits. <laughs> it's been, been going on for quite some time. And uh, man, this day, this day has been uh, rough. <laughs> man, what's the last movie I actually went to? Yeah, I don't care much for uh, uh, actors, but you know, that's kind of the goodish way things of being uh, half blind. Uh, I don't tend to recognize a lot of people, so you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, although, you know, their voice does help. Uh, occasionally you hear the voice and you're like, ah, okay, I know that person. Uh, but not so much from faces, which can be a blessing when you only have the same actors all the time. Oh man. <sighs> I don't want any spaghetti anytime soon. <laughs> Just because of this failure. <laughs> this credit song is pretty su uh, pretty sweet, isn't it? Uh, next time we will have uh, we will have our vengeance on this game I'm sure uh, as I said this game is probably going to get requested quite often so I probably get to practice it quite a lot but uh, man this day was a bit rough uh, like we had a rough stuff a start we uh, I kept forgetting all kinds of stuff uh, kind of funny I <laughs> I, uh, I also, um, for some reason, I decided to thank people, so tomorrow I wanted to do a little pizza party, so I figured, I, you know, I'm too stubborn to actually buy dough and sauce myself, uh, buy it, so I just have to just make it, you know how it is. <laughs> uh, and of course I forgot that I actually made it, so, you know, uh, just before the stream started, I actually went into the kitchen to get my towel back from the yeast monster. <laughs> Uh, it's one of those days, <laughs> but uh, you know, it's a <laughs> can uh, kind of laugh with that kind of crappy, uh, crap, crap stuff happening. Um, and you know, uh, was kind of a rough start in the stream as well. I'm very sorry about that. I'm not entirely sure what happened, uh, but you know, that uh, that stuff kind of happens where it just crashes and you just go uh, with it, and it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I am still glad that uh, you guys tuned in, uh, tuned in again still. 
And I'm I'm really glad you guys uh, stood by here and just watched me fail at uh, Hotel Mario and checked out some of those uh, uh, probably lesser interesting game. Although you know, for me it was still kind of neat to check those out. Um, kind of the uh, the the quirk of the CDI enthusiasts, I suppose. Anyway, next week um, we'll probably go and do the Nobelia. Uh, game and uh, probably something else because Nobelia it only takes about half an hour uh, you know granted that I still know how to work it so uh, expect five hours <laughs> and yeah thank you very much Ed, uh, that would be cool but uh, don't don't worry too much about it just to try uh, some things out um, also working on the on the on the review slowly for uh, family games it's kind of going to be a big one i'm afraid but uh, we'll see things have been very slow for me in general but uh, all things you know in moderation they come as they go and they go as they come <laughs> i'm in no rush uh, anymore uh, but yeah uh, thank you all very much for for joining me really awesome that you were here and uh, that you actually enjoyed it that was uh, that was really nice uh, i enjoyed my time once again and that is thank to you guys so really 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 grateful for that and yeah if you want to join me at another stream the next one will be on sunday uh it's wednesday and sunday um and sunday we will go again through some commodore 64 games uh and see what we find there we, we still have two here that Wait, there were two here, but Grizzo decided to displace one. <laughs> so we'll find that one again. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, see you guys next time. Until then, take care. Bye-bye uh, for now. The muzzle.